What's up guys? It's yo boy Omni Sensei. Welcome to What If I Was Reborn as Uchiha Reviving the Clan with Harem System. Part 3. Like, share, and comment on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also, remember to check out the original story, link in the description. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. Sasuke, with a face full of killing intent, looked at Natsuo. Natsuo sighed deliberately. Yes, you don't know. But recently, the assets of the Achiha clan were suppressed by the daimyo, and the government even almost revoked our mining rights. And you know what happened just now. The daimyo suddenly backed off and even commended us. Of course, from what I know, Itachi attacked the daimyo of the Land of Fire and exterminated many influential and high-ranking officials. Although, it's not good to say it like this. But Atachi did help us sure enough, it was Atachi. Sasuke's eyes were filled with anger, and his teeth made a grinding sound. Natsuo, we at Shiha must have ambition. We can't accept this. I turned them down, but they refused to take no for an answer. Natsuo sighed lightly, pretending to be helpless. And you may think that as long as we don't accept the daimyo's reward, it has nothing to do with Atachi. But do you think anyone will dare to attack our Achiha clan's businesses or properties in the future? Whether you accept it or not, these are all benefits brought by Atachi. Or should we just sell off all of Achiha clan's assets, just to avoid owing Atachi a favor? Sasuke opened his mouth, but couldn't say anything for a while. Even as a child, he knew that the Achiha clan couldn't sell off all their family assets just because of a personal unwillingness. That would make him a sinner of the clan. But those were also benefits brought by Itachi. He really didn't want them. Why did that bastard Itachi suddenly do such a thing? Sasuke's face was filled with anger, and he angrily said, Clearly, he killed everyone, so why does he still pretend to help? We don't need his help. This time, it really wasn't him helping. It was me pretending to be Itachi. Natsuo thought to himself, but on the surface, he sighed and smiled bitterly. According to the intelligence, Itachi seems to regard Ichiha clan's assets as his own, perhaps he still plans to conquer Konoha in the future, and inherit the entire legacy of the Ichiha clan. Although this explanation was full of loopholes, Sasuke still believed it, mainly because he couldn't think of any other reason. I won't let him succeed. Sasuke gritted his teeth and rushed out with a determined look on his face. It seemed like he was heading to the training ground to continue training. Although Sasuke was young, he understood that he didn't have the ability to refuse Atachi's help. Just like when Atachi spared him out of kindness back then. The only thing he could do was to train hard and fight for justice. Bang, bang, bang. Sasuke fiercely pounded the wooden stake. Becoming stronger required accumulation over time. But he couldn't think of any other quick methods to become stronger. No, there is actually a way to become stronger quickly. Sasuke gritted his teeth. That is the Sharingan. The Sharingan wasn't the only way to become stronger. But Sasuke knew that it was the only way he could defeat Itachi. Yes, those unique eyes, just like Itachi's. Manjekyo Sharingan. The key point wasn't whether unlocking the Manjekyo would guarantee victory. But rather this was the only path Sasuke could see to defeat Itachi. Even Itachi told me that only with eyes like his can I stand in front of him. Sasuke understood very well. Even he knows that this is the only way I can defeat him. Perhaps because Natsuo was still there. The pressure of reviving the clan was shared with him. The current Sasuke is more rational than the original Sasuke. And he can see his brother's strength more clearly. That was someone who awakened the Sharingan at the age of 8, became a Chunin at the age of 10, by passing the Chunin exams alone, joined the Anbu at the age of 11, and single-handedly annihilated the Achiha clan at the age of 13. Now, Sasuke is almost 10 years old, and his strength is considered good in the Ninja Academy. But even if he is arrogant, he doesn't think he can compare to Atachi when he was the same age. Opening the Manjekyo Sharingan is indeed difficult, and there may be no hope in a lifetime. On the other hand, training like now, although it requires time and accumulation, can gradually become stronger. This path is much more realistic than hoping to awaken the Manjekyo Sharingan. But the key is not which path is easier, but which path can lead to victory. Evolving the Sharingan Sasuke mused to himself. He awakened the Sharingan when Natsuo took him to the nightclub. Sasuke thought it was like that, but in reality, he had already awakened at the night of the Achiha clan genocide. 
If he wants to evolve his Sharingan, maybe he should go there again and see if he could achieve it. For the Ichiha clan, I can't give up on becoming stronger just because of a small matter. It's just a club, not a dangerous place. There's no reason not to go. Why always rely on Natsuo? Sasuke's gaze was firm, and with determined steps he headed towards the club. Subjectively he acquired the mentality of a warrior about to go to the battlefield. Sasuke going to the nightclub on his own was something Natsuo hadn't expected. If he had known, he could have followed it, recording this beautiful moment to mock adult Sasuke in the future. Or maybe he could casually bum into Sasuke at the nightclub, and then see what expression Sasuke would have. But now he was ignorant of this situation, and simply watched happily at the increase in the Ichiha clan's income. The reputation of Ichiha Itachi, who killed many officials and nobles of the Land of Fire, as well as attacking a daimyo, was gradually spreading. The Ichiha clan's assets stabilized in an instant. This is the deterrent power of a cage-level expert, especially when this cage-level expert has no attachments and fears almost no one's retaliation. That's almost unbeatable. In fact, most powerful rogue ninjas are like this. Although they have no fixed abode, their lives are carefree. Almost no village would send Ambu to hunt down these S-rank rogue ninjas, because it's impossible for a mere pursuit team to kill these experts. Orochimaru played with human experiments and attacked Konoha with a Togaka and Sunagaka in the Naruto series. In the end Konoha only issued a token reward and sent a few miscellaneous shinobi to hunt him down to keep up appearances. For a time, almost everyone who had greedy intentions towards the Ichiha clan's assets had their desires extinguished. Natsuo was very pleased with this. Money is powerless when facing top-tier existences. But in ordinary circumstances, it is quite useful. Although Yuzuki Yugao, Yuhi Kuranai and other elite Kinochi brought great benefits to Natsuo. But the people who really made Natsuo as strong as he is now, are the countless ordinary wives, who in the plot of the Naruto series, do not they have names, and are unknown. But leaving aside the fact that their relationship began as a simple exchange of interests, they are now part of her life. The number of his wives has now expanded to more than 40 people, and is the basis of Natsuo's strength. And if he wants to support a large number of wives and give them the life they deserve as part of his family, money is essential. Just take advantage of the strong influence of Ichiha Atachi and intensify the promotion of Ichiha clan products. Natsuo immediately made a decision, especially Ichiha Electronics, which has low popularity but great potential. We can definitely promote it. How to promote it? Of course, with ads. Although the shinobi world still does not have television or computers for common use, but movies have already appeared. Natsuo decided to make a high-end lifestyle film filled with Ichiha Electronics, and use it as an advertisement to expand its influence. And during the casting process, he unexpectedly came across a familiar name. Fujikazuki. Fujikazuki. Isn't she the only daughter of Sasetsu Kazuhana, the former daimyo of the Land of Snow? So, she has already become a film actress. Natsuo was surprised and started to think. Kazuhana Koyuki, stage name. Fujikazuki. She is the princess of the Land of Snow. Ten years ago, her father lost his position as daimyo to her brother, and she was taken by loyal servants to another country, eventually becoming a film actress. Although she is not as famous as she will be in the future, she already has a considerable reputation and qualifies to be the spokesperson for the Ichiha clan. Moreover, perhaps because she is not yet that famous, the price she quoted is also very economic. Good quality at a low price. Alright, it's her. Three days later, Fujika's Yuki and her agent, former minister of the Land of Snow, Asama Sandeyu, arrived at the Ichiha clan residence. It's definitely an honor that Fujika's Yuki was chosen by you this time, Asama Sandeyu smiled. Although Yuki is still young and not as famous as other female stars, her talent is one of the best. I believe she will not disappoint you. I think so too. Natsuo smiled slightly. I was attracted by Miss Yuki's extraordinary appearance and future potential potential and chose her, Asama Sandeyu said. You truly have exceptional insight as the head of the Ichiha clan. You can see Yuki's potential at a glance. The two chatted and praised each other on business matters. Fujika's Yuki also sat there with a smile, perhaps because of her royal origin. Her etiquette carried a dignified air that ordinary people could not imitate. Her soft smile also gave a feeling of genuine closeness. She is very beautiful even among Natsuo's wives she is in the top tier. But there seems to be a hint of unwillingness between her eyebrows. Natsuo glanced at her but didn't think too much about it. The main focus was still on discussing with the agent Asama Sandei. They talked and confirmed the shooting date and cooperation for the later stage of promotion and signed the agreement. Asama Sandei took out a bottle of wine. Let's go, Lord Natsuo. 
Asama Sandeyu smiled. This is a good wine from the land of snow. I've been saving it for several years. To celebrate the successful cooperation between us, let's have a toast. Oh, a good wine from the land of snow. Natsuo raised an eyebrow. I heard that people there like to drink strong liquor because of the cold weather. Of course. Asama Sandei proudly said, The men of the land of snow, we all grew up drinking strong liquor. And even in some situations, we like to drink to liven things up. And it is said Asama Sandei has suddenly lowered his voice, showing a familiar smile to the men. The older the wine, the more it helps a man's performance. Natsuo smelled the wine, and immediately showed a meaningful expression. Then I'll have to do my best. They both toasted. And Fujika's Yuki also helped with the toast. Not much later thud. Natsuo suddenly fell on the table. Ha! Huh, truly a ninja. Even though the drink was drugged, he was still able to drink so much. Even I, who had taken the antidote early, could barely resist. But he on the other hand, took a long time to fall. Asama Sandeyu sighed in relief and burping. Sandeyu, I think maybe Fujika's Yuki bit her lip. Your Highness, Please do not hesitate, Asama Sandeyu said with an extremely serious expression. Do you know how difficult it is to gain the support of an incredibly powerful ninja clan? With the power of the Echiha clan, which is currently the most influential, we will definitely be able to save the Land of Snow. What's even more precious is that Lord Natsuo is known for being friendly towards women and very responsible. As long as you work hard today, he will definitely use the power of the Echiha clan to help us restore our country. Princess. Without hesitation, Asama Sandeyu knelt on the ground while still smelling of alcohol. Please make a decision. Fujika's Yuki now as Princess Kazahana Koyuki opened her mouth to want to say something. But her eyes were filled with confusion and doubt. Do we really have to do this? She hesitated, feeling lost and helpless. Princess, please hurry. Asama Sandeya urged, This is the Echiha clan. Although I have sent the maids away, there may be ninjas appearing at any time. Please show your determination. Princess Kazahana Koyuki opened her mouth, finally sighing. Sandei, can we really restore the land of snow? We can, Asama Sandei said firmly. With the support of the Achiha clan, we will definitely be able to defeat Jukikika and successfully restore our country. All right, Kazahana Koyuki sighed lightly. Or rather, wasn't this a decision she had already made long ago? Sacrifice her own body and rely on the power of the Achiha clan to defeat the shinobi of Yukikika and restore his country. For my father's sake, I will take this bed. Kazahana Koyuki forced a bitter smile. After all, this is the last chance. If this doesn't work, she will have lost all hope it has been 10 years. Asama Sandei has been urging her every day and she is already tired. She slowly approached Natsuo, her delicate hand touching his chest, about to remove his clothes. Once I take a look, this guy is indeed quite handsome, Kazahana Koyuki forced a bitter smile. Is this considered a consolation? After all, he is the one she is about to lose her virginity to and at this moment, a soft voice sounded. Oh, I was wondering why you would drug me turns out you want to restore the land of snow. Natsuo, who was originally unconscious, suddenly opened his eyes, devoid of any confusion. For the sake of restoring your country, you deliberately set up this one night of drink and his plan. It seems that everyone has the wrong idea about my attitude towards women. I thought you came to cooperate with me. But I didn't expect you to want to sleep with me. Natsuo seemed a little troubled as he smiled. This is quite problematic. It seems that I won't be able to drink with others so easily in the future. Asama Sandeyu widened her eyes. Kazahana Koyuki's delicate hand was still pressed against Natsuo's chest. She blinked in surprise, then exclaimed and backed away in panic. You, 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 weren't you high? But Natsuo simply smiled and said, Your charm is really dazzling. But not to the point that it makes me charm so easily, hey? Why are you running away? You wanted to sleep with me, right? Then do it. I promise I won't resist why are you running away so quickly. Natsuo looked at Kazahana Koyuki, who had almost already left the reception room, with a strange smile on his face. Natsuo, of course, would not be easily treated by two ordinary people, using the kind of drug that ordinary people could obtain. Although Kazahana Koyuki and Asama Sandeya had already used the best drugs they could get their hands on, it was simply wishful thinking to expect it to work on a ninja, especially a cage-level expert. Not to mention that the faint aroma of the drug had been detected by Natsuo for a long time. Even if he hadn't noticed, he would take a lot of drugs to truly incapacitate him. So, when he realized something was wrong with the wine, he didn't take it seriously. Plus, he had a rough guess of what they wanted to do considering the plot of the Naruto series. That's why he became interested and decided to continue the game with them. The result was really unexpected for Natsuo. I didn't think they were so decisive that the princess would want to give herself to me, and then use a honey trap to help her. Okay? 
I'll let you sleep with me. Natsuo chuckled. Come on, I won't resist. Feel free to do whatever you want. Kazuhana Koyuki blushed and kept her distance. Her little toes clenched as if she wanted to dig a hole in the ground. Her hands seemed to remember the touch of Natsuo's chest, and she quickly put them in her sleeves, then covered her face too embarrassed to show her face. On the other hand, Asama Sandeya smiled bitterly. It seems we underestimate ninjas in that case. Let's keep it simple. Without hesitation, he knelt down on the ground and bowed deeply. Lord Natsuo, I would like to ask what price we should pay to obtain the Achiha clan's help for us. Natsuo raised an eyebrow at his words, taking a more elevated view of him. Unable to rely on emotions, he immediately switched to serious negotiations without hesitation or prolonging it. This person had the demeanor of a politician. He was a promising individual. Why did you think of asking me for help in restoring your country? Natsuo asked calmly. Shouldn't you be looking for the daimyo of the Land of Fire for normal restoration? Asama Sandeya could only smile bitterly. I have thought about that. But the Land of Snow is just a small country. We can't afford the interests of a powerful country like the Land of Fire. We have also requested help from the Daimyo of the Land of Fire through our companions. But none of them have managed to return. Most likely, they have already been killed by the Shinobi of Yukigika who are pursuing us. To restore the country, it was not just Asama Sandeyo and Kazahana Koyuki. In fact, Asama Sande had many like-minded comrades, and in the future, a group of them would die in the battle to restore the country. Perhaps the negotiations broke down, otherwise the daimyo wouldn't have allowed the shinobi of Yukigika to kill them. Asama Sande spoke rationally. To restore the country, we can only seek help from a ninja like you. In fact, he felt that this was a heaven-sent opportunity. Suddenly, a shinobi appeared in the ninja world, who kept his promises and assumed responsibility for the women who joined his clan. And this ninja, although his strength was not exceptional to a great extent, still possessed considerable influence. Enough to annihilate countless influential figures in the Land of Fire. He must have his own ace up his sleeve. The only problem was that their plan had failed. So, they could only rely on a direct transaction. Natsuo raised an eyebrow. Oh, is that so-so? Are you prepared to offer a price that will interest the Ichiha clan? We are prepared, Asama Sendeya said without hesitation. What price? The Land of Snow. What do you mean? Your offspring with the princess will become the next daimyo of the Land of Snow, Asama Sandei said firmly. The Land of Snow will be attached to the Echiha clan and become your country. What a generous offer. Natsuo raised an eyebrow. But on second thought, they wouldn't dare to offer a similar reward to the daimyo of the Land of Fire. Otherwise, the daimyo could easily annex the Land of Snow. Only a ninja leader like Natsuo, who enjoyed having children, would accept such a reward. Do you agree? Asama Sandei didn't even lift his head but his voice carried a sense of calmness. Why wouldn't I agree? Natsuo suddenly smiled. The shinobi of Yukigika is nothing to me. Getting a country for free, why wouldn't I agree? You've agreed Asama Sandeya suddenly smiled. Well, as for your reward, today will do. All right, I will prepare the forces on my side. And you, the people who will work to restore the country, give me a few days, which should be enough. Then let's go. Natsuo smiled and stood up. As he left the room, he saw Kazuhana Koyuki and approached her, then gently lifted her chin. Now the problem falls on you Natsuo's lips curved into a smile. So, are you willing to marry me? I Kazuhana Koyuki's mind was in chaos. At first, Asama Sandei had told her that they wanted to use Natsuo's sense of responsibility to gain the support of Ichiha clan. But why did Asama Sandei suddenly change his mind? What did he and Natsuo talk about? What has been decided? Why does it feel like Asama Sandeo is selling me? Kazuhana Koyuki felt a bit confused and couldn't come to her senses for a while. Princess Koyuki, Asama Sandeo knelt down again, crying. Have you forgotten the citizens of the Land of Snow? Have you forgotten your father's instructions? What are you still hesitating for? Yes, what am I still hesitating for? Didn't I make up my mind and resolve from the beginning? Kazuhana Koyuki sighed softly. I am willing. The Achiha clan residence was shrouded in eerie silence under the moonlight. Natsuo looked at Princess Kazuhana Koyuki with an intensity that seemed to cut through her shyness and dignified aura. They had agreed to a marriage in the name of restoring the country, but at that moment words took a backseat. Kazuhana Koyuki, the princess and former movie star, had a special charm that did not go unnoticed. Her eyes expressed a mixture of innocence and curiosity. Although inexperienced in relationships, she exuded a dignity that only someone of her royal lineage could possess. Natsuo slowly approached the princess, gently taking her hand. Her hands intertwined and a warm shiver ran down Koyuki's spine. As they looked deeply at each other Koyuki gave him a shy smile. 
her cheeks turning a soft shade of pink. Natsuo brought his face close to hers, and her lips met in a sweet and passionate kiss. Time stops, the world is forgotten. Clothes fall, passion unleashes. Two naked bodies, in a captivating embrace. Bodies linked, hearts in a beat. Desire guides them, without fear or sense. Natsuo and the princess unite as one, under the cover of the stars, their desire blossoms. The next day, Kazuhana Koyuki lay on the bed, silent. In fact, she had just barely come to her senses until now. Did Asama Sande betray me? Kazuhana Koyuki smiled bitterly, her face full of self-mockery. Partly yes, partly no. Natsuo lay on the edge of the bed, smiling lightly. After marrying me, your rights haven't changed. From the perspective of interests, you haven't really lost anything. In fact, your power will be enhanced when you ascend to the throne in the future. That person is only focused on interests and wants to restore the country. In the mind of such a politician, there is no concept of whether a woman can be happy. He just maximized the use of the cards in his hand. I guess he probably appeared in front of you recently after the Achiha clan incident became big, right? Asama Sandeu is just an ordinary person, and can't distinguish between Achiha Itachi and the Achiha clan. In the eyes of someone like him, who is not well informed, the Achiha clan, who has continuously destroyed countless powerful officials who targeted them, and even made the daimyo compromise with them, are powerful. But it turned out to be a fluke. Although all the information he saw was wrong, the final result was true. Natsuo can really help them restore the country. It's because he saw hope for the restoration of the country that he found you as a big banner. Natsuo smiled. If he hadn't discovered me, he would probably wait until he had some preparations, and a certain chance of winning before finding you. But in the end, he would still find you. In the Naruto movie version, Asama Sandeu found Kazuhana Koyuki after she filmed the Princess Girl movie. After finding Kazuhana Koyuki, he immediately hired Shinobi from Konohagaka as Kakashi, and took Kazuhana Koyuki to the Land of Snow. But now the movie hasn't been filmed yet, but he has already brought Kazuhana Koyuki to Natsuo. In fact, it is obvious. He is just using Kazuhana Koyuki as a tool for the restoration of the country. So, I was used. Kazuhana Koyuki smiled bitterly. He wants to help me restore the country, and then become the powerful figure in charge of the Land of Snow. When he found me, I thought he was a person who loved the land of snow. No. Natsuo shook her head. Your husband is me. With me here, what is he? A mere figurehead. Can he surpass you? His goal is still just the restoration of the country, but his methods are too direct, which you can't accept. Natsuo doesn't reject this kind of directness. The heads of clans are all politicians, and exchanging interests is the most basic thing. Family issues, national politics, feelings are unreliable. Of course, some small tricks are also allowed. And Asama Sandeu probably told Kazuhana Koyuki a lot about the suffering of the people of the Land of Snow, and the tragic fate of the previous daimyos, trying to arouse Kazuhana Koyuki's fighting spirit. But in the end, the decision was still up to Kazuhana Koyuki. If you don't want to restore the country, you can continue to stay in the Ichiha clan. Natsuo smiled and said, Those shinobi from Yukikika would never dare to come to me. At home, you will always be safe. Kazuhana Koyuki remained silent for a long time, and finally sighed softly. Then she gently leaned against Natsuo's chest. No, after all, I am the princess of the Land of Snow. I should contribute to the Land of Snow. Saying that, she slowly got into the quilt. This contribution was just right, not too light or too heavy, with just the right amount of strength. Princess, you are truly admirable. Some days after Natsuo, dressed in a ninja suit with a mask, appeared at the border of the Land of Snow. It's really cold. Natsuo shook the snow off his body. The Land of Snow has always been this cold. It's a country without spring. Kazuhana Koyuki paused and continued. But the previous daimyos have always been frugal and saved a sum of money. This money is the treasure of the Land of Snow. My uncle, Kazuhana Doto, has been chasing after me to seize this wealth. She couldn't help but touch the hexagonalized crystal pendant on her chest. This pendant is the key to unlocking the treasure of the Land of Snow. Kazuhana Doto is the younger brother of the former daimyo, Kazuhana Sasetsu, and the uncle of Kazuhana Koyuki. He hired the shinobi from Yukigika to take over the Land of Snow, killed his brother, and even attempted to kill Koyuki. However, Koyuki was saved by Kakashi, who was sent by the third Hokage to investigate the Land of Snow at that time. Kazuhana Doto has been trying to find Kazuhana Koyuki, and what he wants is this treasure of the Land of Snow. No, there is no treasure in the Land of Snow. Asama Sandeu shook his head and said, As the Minister of the Land of Snow, I have never seen any treasure warehouse of the previous daimyos. If there really is this treasure, the daimyo would not have been overthrown by Kazuhana Doto, this rebel. If there really was money, it would be very simple to hire ninjas to deal with those shinobi from Yukigika, 
and there would be no need to put in so much effort to restore the country. Lord Natsuo, although the land of snow is geographically barren, and may not be as wealthy as you imagine, it will soon become your country. Please show the strength of the Ichiha clan. It may not be a place with much value in your hands. But for me that's not necessarily true. Natsuo smiled slightly. The land of snow is indeed barren, and the so-called ninjas of Yukigaka are nothing more than a few cats and dogs. But to say that there is nothing good in the land of snow is also not true. At this moment, Natsuo looked up. Suddenly, in the white snow, several figures appeared. They were covered with a white cloth, hidden almost perfectly hidden under the snow. It wasn't until they stood up that they were visible. Are they ninja of Yukikiko Asama Sandeyu exclaimed. The leader of the team was a man wearing a strange metal outfit with light blue hair that resembled the snow. His voice was cold with a hint of mockery. Welcome to the land of snow, Roganada. How did you know we were here? Asama Sandeya exclaimed, his face filled with fear. Roga Nada is Kazahana Doto's most trusted subordinate. His strength is at the Jonin level. At the same time, two ninjas stood up on the nearby cliff. One was a well-built woman, and the other was a very burly man. They were both wearing unique clothing and looked down from above. We welcome you here, Princess Koyuki. Did you bring back the hexagonal crystal? Kakuyoku Fubuki and Fayakuma Miza. Both of them are experts among the shinobi of Yukikika. You all are actually actually here why can you find our whereabouts? Asama Sandei stood there in a daze, disbelief on his face. Of course, it's because there's a spy. Natsuo sighed lightly, then pointed to the side with his hand. Right there, Asama Sandeyu followed his gaze. He saw a familiar person rushing out in a panic. The person who ran was the one Natsuo had pointed out. He was the spy. Kazahana Koyuki widened her eyes. It was a shinobi from Yukigika. The shinobi of Yukigika who killed her own father. Asama Sandeyu also looked shocked. He never expected a spy to appear in his own team. But his reaction was quick. Mr. Natsuo, the situation has gotten out of control. Asama Sandeyu looked urgent. Your Ichiha clan must have sent some people, right? How many did they send? We need their help. They are elite shinobi from Yukigika. Due to their abilities, they can take on multiple opponents at once. How many? Natsuo was taken aback, then smiled. Just me. What? Asama Sandei was stunned. Kazahana Koyuki also turned her head in surprise. Don't you know? The Achiha clan was massacred by a traitor. All the ninjas in the clan were killed, and now I'm the only adult left. Natsuo smiled slightly. We Achiha have no one else. Asama Sandei was stunned. In fact, he had heard similar rumors. But recently the Achiha clan had caused quite a stir, so she thought the rumors were false. But the result only Natsuo. Holding onto his last hope, he asked, Lord Natsuo, did you hire a group of powerful ninjas? With the Achiha clan's wealth, it would be easy to do so. Natsuo still smiled. No, I came alone. You alone? Yes, just me. Asama Sandei swallowed nervously. Just one person. Kazahana Koyuki and the others beside her were also shocked. We were counting on the strength of the Achiha clan to turn the tide. And now you tell me you didn't bring anyone. Then how are we going to fight? It's not necessarily impossible to fight. Asama Sandeyu tried to calm himself and found a reason. You are a Jonin from Kanoha, your strength must be extraordinary. Dealing with these people shouldn't be a problem, right? Natsuo was about to speak, but then a voice came from afar. Do you want to trust this Achiha? Do you know how he became a Jonin? A burly figure slowly approached from a distance. He became a Jonin because he was attacked in the village. The third Hokage had to give him the rank of Jonin to appease him. Kazahana Koyuki looked at the figure approaching, and her pupils contracted. She subconsciously murmured. Kazahana Doto he was her father's killer, the daimyo of the land of snow, and also the strongest man in the land of snow. Kazahana Doto stepped forward slowly, sneering. Kazahana Koyuki, my niece, are you really counting on such a ninja to help you restore the country? He's not that strong. Hearing Kazahana Doto's words, Asama Sandei turned his head in confusion and looked at Natsuo, then asked, Lord Natsuo, is this really true? Oh, my position as a Jonin is indeed obtained in this way. Natsuo nodded calmly. Upon hearing his admission, the faces of the people next to him were filled with despair. On the other hand, Asama Sandeya gritted his teeth and said, So what? Lord Natsuo is still a Jonin of Kanoha, much stronger than you ninjas of Yukigika. That is beyond doubt. We still have a chance. Yes. After all, Natsuo is at least a Jonin of Kanoha, and he is also a member of the Achiha clan. His strength should be stronger than that of the Yukigika ninjas, right? Haha. <laughs> That's not necessarily true. Nadaroga laughed heartily. You probably don't know that there was a Kanoha shinobi who fled in panic from my hands before. That person's name is Hatik Kakashi. 
At that time, he was a Jonin, and now he seems to be an elite Jonin, right? I almost killed him. In his smile, there was a hint of nostalgia. Hatik Kakashi almost killed by Nadaroga. Asama Sandeo and the others were completely desperate upon hearing this. Kakashi's reputation is not small. His mission completion rate is outstanding, and he is also an elite Jonin of Kanoha. If even an elite Jonin almost died, what could Natsuo, who is only a Jonin, do? Princess, it's the fault of this old servant. Asama Sandeu finally couldn't hold on and cried out in pain. It's the old servant's reckless actions that have ruined the last hope of the Land of Snow. Lord Sisetsu, everything is the fault of this old servant. Not only did I die, but I also implicated the Princess Wu Wu. Tears streamed down his face as he cried bitterly. The other peoples also wailed, their eyes filled with despair. Kill them. Kazahana Doto waved her hand. Take Kazahana Koyuki away. I can't wait to see the wealth accumulated by our ancestors for generations. Fayakuma Miza, Kakioku Fubuki, and Roga Nader all acted without hesitation. They formed hand seals with both hands, and used a large amount of ice release condensing into ice dragons and attacking the people below. Fire release. Great fire annihilation. The huge flame surged forward. The heat wave emptied the air, like an angry dragon, instantly raising the temperature of the land of snow covered in ice and snow. The raging flames erupted fiercely. In almost an instant, the surrounding area turned into a sea of fire. The sea of fire extended for several miles, engulfing everything in flames. The ice release used by the Yukigaka ninjas melted almost instantly upon contact with the flames, and the surging waves of fire continued to rush towards them without stopping. How is this possible, Roganada? How can you use such a powerful fire release in the Land of Snow? The Land of Snow is almost frozen, so even Yukigaka ninjas without KK Genkai can use ice release. Even Kakashi can't do it. How could you? Rogan Nada's eyes almost popped out of his head. Oh, maybe it's because I'm slightly stronger than Kakashi. Natsuo gestured with his fingers, smiling. Besides, there was a hint of disdain in his eyes. Did you forget what happened when Kakashi escaped? Kakashi was just a teenager back then. He still managed to escape with Kazahana Koyuki, who an ordinary person was under the persecution of Rogan Nada and almost the entire country. And yet, you have the audacity to claim that you defeated Kakashi. Of course, Roga Nada is still powerful, definitely at the level of a Jonin. Facing the surging flames, Roga Nada's eyes revealed a hint of madness. It's okay, I still have chakra armor. The armor that even Kakashi can't break through. I can the next second. All the ninjas of Yukigaka were devoured by the flames. The raging flames swept everything away, finally crashing towards Roga Nada, who was standing at the back. He stood there dumbfounded, and the next second he was swallowed by fire release. It's over. Natsuo clapped his hands. This is also why he had discovered the spy early on. But let him go. Clearing the field with fire release is so comfortable. Everyone behind him stood there dumbfounded, looking in shock at everything in front of them. Natsuo slowly lowered his hand and smiled at Kazahana Koyuki. All right, it's over. This country is yours now. I don't think anyone will oppose you. And if they do, I will simply finish them off. You should go and open that treasure, there will be surprises. And as for me, he took a few steps forward and stood in front of a charred corpse. With a few casual movements, he took out the damaged ninja armor. This was the main target of his operation. The chakra armor, a characteristic of the land of snow. This is the prototype of scientific ninja tools. Natsuo's eyes gleamed. Scientific ninja tools are the weapons that truly unleash their full potential during the time in which the Baruto series takes place. These ninja tools, manufactured through advanced scientific technology, largely replace some of the abilities of ninjas and can play a crucial role in emergency situations. However, these scientific ninja tools are different from those developed by Konohagaka in the future. The chakra armor can generate a protective barrier blocking ninjutsu and jinjutsu. The ninja tools can also allow the user to fly, and even seal the enemy's chakra. Of course, compared to the future ninja tools, the ninja tools in the Land of Snow are indeed the most advanced at this stage, but they are not as practical. Once ninja tools exceed their limits, they will explode causing serious injuries to the user with significant side effects. Therefore, apart from the Land of Snow, other ninja villages do not pay much attention to these seemingly powerful ninja tools. But through research, it is possible to achieve the same effects as in the era of the Boruto series. Natsuo thought in his heart. He had already ordered Tono Katasuke, who was best suited to investigate this item, to come and accept the ninja tool technology in the Land of Snow. It's not just the ninja tools. There are many technologies in the Land of Snow that can be used. For example, illusion projectors, armored trains, artificial rain mechanisms, airships. These industrial products can provide a solid foundation for the Ichihe Research Center. Of course, 
It's not just these, there are also the treasures of the Land of Snow Natsuo looked at Kazuhana Koyuki. After Kazuhana Koyuki uses the key to her father's treasure, she discovers that the treasure is a generator to change the Land of Snow into the Land of Spring. In their field of vision, the Land of the Land of Snow, which should have been covered in ice and snow, quickly turned green at a visible speed. The temperature rose at a visible speed, and after a while, several precious butterflies appeared. At the same time, there were also the images and words left by her father. She begins to remember the moments she spent with her father, while contemplating her dream come true. The land of spring, and sheds tears of joy and truly smiles for the first time in several years. This was the unfinished environmental transformation machine left by her father. It could consume a large amount of energy in a short time to change the climate into spring. But eventually, when the energy was exhausted, it would return to winter. Although this technology was still incomplete, if they continued the research, the land of snow would truly become the land of spring. Lord Natsuo, I have a request. Kazuhana Koyuki pleaded. I have heard that the Achiha clan has considerable wealth. Can you please invest in my father's environmental transformation machine and make it a complete product? And let my land of snow truly become the land of spring. That depends on your performance. Natsuo lightly caressed Kazuhana Koyuki's beautiful face and her cheeks blushed as she lowered her head. Under the dim light of the moon, their two figures meet in the dark bedroom. Kazuhana Koyuki, with her white dress like foam, and he, with eyes that reflect madness. His hands intertwine with passion. Natsuo lifts her dress, an invitation to a world where desire is perfect. She turns, her back to him, her skin crawling from her gentle caresses. Each touch, an intertwined sigh in this delicious dance. Muffled whispers, their bodies on display, the echo of her moans becomes a song. A suppressed scream escapes, without mercy while overflowing passion ignites union. The land of snow belonged to Natsuo, and the daimyo Kazuhana Koyuki was already in Natsuo's grasp. Increasing investment to turn this country into the land of spring was also beneficial to Natsuo. There was no reason to reject Kazuhana Koyuki's request, so after enjoying himself, Natsuo immediately invested the 10 billion ryo provided by the daimyo. He even secretly used the wood released to plant trees and forests in the land of snow, facilitating the development of the country. However, even with such a huge investment, the results could not be seen in the short term. The dream of turning the land of snow into the land of spring had been the aspiration of successive rulers of the land of snow, and they had invested a large amount of resources, which only had a preliminary effect on Kazuhana Koyuki's father. In the end, the country became poor, and Kazuhana Sasetsu was unable to hire ninjas to protect itself, resulting in him being overthrown by his younger brother, Kazuhana Doto. Despite Ryo's injection of 10 billion, the land of snow still could not be considered rich. So Natsuo turned around and went to the land of the moon, plundering its treasury. The Land of the Moon, like the Land of Snow, was a country that appeared in the film version of the Naruto series. Unlike the barren, high-tech country of the Land of Snow, the Land of the Moon, although small in size, was very wealthy. And the royal family was somewhat styled like a Middle Eastern tycoon from Natsuo's previous life. After looting the treasure of the Land of the Moon, the research team entered the fast lane. This investment may not be profitable in the short term, but in the long term it can bring huge benefits. In the future, this place can be established as a high-tech research and development base, as well as a product manufacturing base. Natsuo thought to himself, from the Land of Snow, Ichiha clan's products can be delivered to countless households. After not spending much time in the Land of Snow, Kazuhana Koyuki became pregnant. After arranging for the research personnel to assist Tono Katasuke, Natsuo returned to Konohagaka. Of course, when he returned, he could not directly express that he now nominally owned the Land of Snow. He only claimed that Kazuhana Koyuki and Natsuo fell in love at first sight, and Natsuo helped Kazuhana Koyuki hire highly skilled ninjas through the channels of the Achiha clan, and paid the necessary rewards for the restoration of the country. Kazuhana Koyuki then entered the stage of pregnancy, deepening the connection between Achiha clan and the Land of Snow. It sounds like a normal love story, but after details of Osama Sendai's acquisition of Aphrodisiac spread, many people reacted thinking that Kazuhana Koyuki had treacherously attacked Natsuo, resulting in her pregnancy. This led to Natsuo having to provide funds for the restoration of Kazuhana Koyuki's country, fearing that something might happen to the child's mother. Kazuhana Koyuki, this little bitch, actually drugged him. Sham PH, there are no good people in the entertainment industry. Poor Natsuo, he was deceived by that woman. Countless women angrily accused Kazuhana Koyuki, moved by Natsuo's responsible attitude, their eyes filled with tears, and then they ran to the Achiha clan's bar, hoping to run into Natsuo. Hum, for some reason, the price of aphrodisiacs in the vicinity of Kanoha suddenly increased. The price was higher than poisons that could kill enemies and provide advantages in battle. 
Many Sumagaka poison technique masters switched to producing aphrodisiacs instead of poisons, making money with tears. Natsuo's wives also criticized Kazahana Koyuki, angrily berating her for drugging her husband. But Natsuo gently calmed his wives' restlessness with his body. He worked hard and toiled diligently. Soon, many of his wives became pregnant, among them were Yukino and Jizuki Yugao. Natsuo immediately smiled. Although Kazahana Koyuki was beautiful, she was just an ordinary person, and occasionally trying something new was not bad. But the Kyunoichi were his true loves. And what made him even happier was, Anko gave birth. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 152, you gain plus 13 mental power. Jinjutsu. Tsukiyomi. 13 points of mental power, in addition to the high level Jinjutsu. That is granted by Ichihara Tachi's Manjekyo Sharingan. Even techniques exclusive to the Manjekyo Sharingan are considered rewards. Natsuo revealed a delighted smile. This was an unexpected joy. In that case, it seems that I can cosplay as Itachi more conveniently. Natsuo smiled. After having so many children, the system has rewarded him with countless ninjutsu. Although Natsuo didn't dare to say that he knew all the ninjutsu that Itachi knew, he knew quite a bit. Coupled with the visual technique of the Manjekyo Sharingan that no one could imitate, he felt that even Itachi might think that he had developed the habit of sleepwalking, rather than someone impersonating him. Keep working hard. Natsuo was full of fighting spirit. The money problem is solved. All that's left is to have as many children as possible. And there's also the Jonin that Orochimaru sent. And Yuzumaki Yoko the future will be even more exciting. Natsuo continued to devote his limited time to the endless task of having children. Two months passed. A message from the ninja school interrupted his progress in having children. Natsuo hurriedly rushed over, feeling a bit confused. What happened? Did Sasuke have a conflict with a senior student? And then Sasuke almost killed that classmate. Yes, teacher Aruka said helplessly. If it were a trivial matter, I wouldn't bother you. But that classmate is currently being treated at Kanoha Hospital. It seems the risk is not small. This is really Natsuo rubbed his head, feeling a headache. Although the ninja school was also a school, it was different from the schools in his previous life. They wouldn't involve parents unless something major happened. After all, ninjas were warriors, and ninja students were reserve warriors. But now, with the upperclassmen being admitted to the Kanoha Hospital, it was clear that Sasuke had been extremely ruthless. They had to involve the parents. Sasuke, what happened? Natsuo sighed lightly, looking at Sasuke beside him. Sham PH? Sasuke snorted coldly and turned his head away. Naruto, on the other hand, looked indignant and said, Natsuo, it's not Sasuke's fault. That guy's mouth was too vicious. He actually, actually, he insulted Sasuke, saying he was a child without a mother or father to raise him. Sasuke got angry and took action. He started it all. Of course, what Naruto didn't say was that if he hadn't desperately stopped them, that older student wouldn't be being treated, but rather they would be picking up his scattered ashes. Sasuke had really tried his hardest to beat him. All right, I understand now. Natsuo sighed softly. Then he looked at Aruka and said, The other student's parents are here too. Let's talk. After a long time, Natsuo walked out slowly, smiling as he gently touched the restless Sasuke's head. It's all right now. Natsuo smiled and said, let's go home. Sasuke was silent for a moment and followed him. The two of them, one big and one small, walked slowly towards the Echiha clan's territory. After a long time, Sasuke couldn't help but ask, Natsuo, I really didn't seriously hurt that guy, did I? That classmate is in trouble. Natsuo calmly said, Kanoha Hospital has determined that he can no longer continue to be a ninja. So, what will happen to me? Sasuke asked surprised. The incident is resolved. Natsuo said with a smile, I reached an agreement with the other student's parents. There will be no punishment for you, so you can rest assured. However, this made Sasuke even more sad. He bit his lip and said, You bowed your head to them because of me, didn't you? With Sasuke's proud personality, if Natsuo really bowed his head because of him, he might as well die. Not really. Natsuo smiled and said, I just gave them two choices. Sasuke didn't understand. Choices. Yes. Natsuo smiled and said, I told them that either the Achiha clan would pay all of that student's medical expenses and provide him with a well-paying job, since he can no longer be a ninja, and we would also give him annual compensation to ensure that he has a comfortable life. Or we could hand you over to them and let them do whatever they want, whether it's making you unable to be a ninja anymore, or completely disabling your limbs, or even directly killing you. But at that time, the Achiha clan would have to kill all of them. Oh, sorry, we are all comrades of Kanoha. How could the Achiha clan do such cruel things? 
But it's normal for hype bounties to occasionally appear on the black market for members of your clan, young and old. The Achiha clan won't take responsibility for that, Natsuo said with a smile. As it turns out, our comrades in Kanoha have a high level of moral integrity, and are very reasonable. They quickly realized that their child also made a mistake, and both sides were equally at fault in this dispute. So, they happily accepted my first suggestion, Sasuke. At this moment, he didn't know whether he should cry or laugh. Natsuo's style is really, but Natsuo squinted his eyes. This time, Sasuke went a little overboard, but whether it was intentional or not is another matter. The mother who initially screamed that Sasuke should pay with her life for her son was demanding justice. She said, if my child can't be a ninja, then he should pay the same price. That's only fair. It sounds like the angry words of a parent, but maybe someone is trying to use this method to get rid of Sasuke. Like a certain root leader who has always been hostile towards the Achiha. Well, maybe I'm overthinking it. Natsuo sighed lightly. The problem is that that leader Root has always been hostile to the Achiha. Whenever something happens, I can't help but think it's his conspiracy and trickery. Maybe other clan heads feel the same way as me. This really affects the unity of Kanoha. Should we remove Danzo for the sake of Kanoha? Natsuo thought for a moment and suddenly felt a pang in his heart. What's wrong with me? I'm Natsuo, a gentleman, the dream lover of countless girls in Kanoha, and the leader of a peaceful and elegant clan. How could I think of such terrible things? This kind of thing is clearly what that terrifying Ichiha Atachi would think of and put into practice. It's too scary. The two of them walked for a while. Sasuke remained silent for a long time, then suddenly spoke up. Natsuo, I remember you're also an orphan, right? Yes. Natsuo nodded. Both my parents are deceased, and I have no siblings or relatives. Do you sometimes feel uncomfortable? Sasuke paused. There were many reasons why he almost killed someone today. For example, a few days ago, he secretly transformed and went to the club. But his Sharingan didn't change. Or the fact that his training hasn't been going well these days, and his strength hasn't improved. Or the fact that girls like Sakura are starting to annoy him again. All these things combined made him extremely irritated. But the discomfort in his heart was the main reason why he acted so ruthlessly. He missed his parents. Upon hearing this, Natsuo smiled gently. It's alright, I've gotten used to this kind of life, and being an orphan also has its advantages, you know. Advantages. Sasuke looked up. Yes. Natsuo smiled. For example, we don't have to worry about too many people shedding tears when we die. Sasuke fell silent for a moment. What about the disadvantages? Disadvantages. Natsuo thought for a moment and smiled. Maybe the disadvantage is that people like us are always the outnumbered ones when fighting against others, right? Yes, we're always outnumbered. Sasuke fell into silence upon hearing this. It wasn't until the two of them arrived at the Ichiha residence that he suddenly spoke up. Natsuo. Yes. You won't have to fight alone anymore. Sasuke gritted his teeth and said firmly. I will help you. I will always help you. No matter who the enemy is, I will help you. Natsuo was momentarily stunned. Then he smiled. Is that so? That's really great Sasuke. Aren't your eyes looking to the right? Be more vigilant. When your arm is not in use, always keep it near your ninja tool pouch. It is the basic requirement for a ninja to be able to draw their weapon at the fastest speed at any time. Illusions, ninjutsu, tajutsu, chakra is the foundation of everything. Your control of chakra is still far from sufficient. The Sharingan is just a weapon. How to use this weapon is the difference between the Achiha yes. Your brother surpasses all the Achiha in the use of this weapon. That is why he was able to achieve the feat of annihilating the clan. Your movements should be fluid, don't stiffen up. Are you waiting for me to attack? The figures of Natsuo and Sasuke intertwine in the exclusive training field of the Achiha clan. Their figures were like phantoms, their movements extremely fast. If it were an ordinary person, they wouldn't be able to keep up with their movements. But fortunately, they both had a pair of exceptional eyes. Natsuo was training Sasuke. Since Natsuo's strength reached a certain point, he no longer has the worries that tormented him at the beginning. And because of the previous incident, Sasuke was not suitable for going to school for a short period of time. So Natsuo thought about it, and decided to teach him some things himself. Bang. Natsuo kicked and Sasuke flew out, rolling several times on the sandy ground. Before his body could come to a complete stop, Sasuke twisted his waist and stood up, his eyes staring straight ahead holding a kunai in his hand, assuming a defensive posture. However, the expected attack did not come. Instead, Natsuo stood not far away with his hands in his pockets, smiling. Sasuke, do you feel any difference between you and me? Natsuo smiled and asked. Sasuke remained silent for a moment. In fact, Natsuo did not use particularly strong chakra, and the speed and strength he displayed was self-restrained, similar to his own. But throughout the entire battle, 
He was completely suppressed. Your attacks always hit me where it hurts the most Sasuke thought for a moment and said. Every time it's very painful. I've thought about fighting back, but it's not the right time to do so. How should I describe this feeling? Sasuke frowned, not knowing how to explain it. But Natsuo laughed worthy of being an Ichiha genius. He directly solved the puzzle and said, it's rhythm. Rhythm. Sasuke was stunned, a flash of inspiration seemed to pass through his mind, but he couldn't grasp it for a moment. Yes, rhythm. Natsuo smiled and said, Do you know, Ichiha and Senju are two completely different types of ninjas. The Senju clan is much stronger than us in terms of chakra quantity, the lethality of ninjutsu, and their own recovery ability. But during the Sengoku period, our two clans were evenly matched because we relied on rhythm. By relying on the subtle observations of the Sharingan, we attack the most vulnerable point of the enemy, before they even exert their power. It's not about how strong we are, but about disrupting the opponent's rhythm and bringing it under our control. When the rhythm of the battlefield is in our hands, our movements will flow like water, and we will have complete knowledge of everything the enemy does. We manipulate them as if they are in the palm of our hands, leaving them with no choice but to be defeated. With a smile, he continued, that's why among the many ninja clans of the Sengoku period, only the Achiha fight with elegance. And an elegant Achiha never fights with their life on the line, nor do they gamble with their chances of survival. Sasuke listened intently, his eyes shining. This is the Achiha way of fighting. With the help of the Sharingan, we calculate every detail of the battle, from the smallest to the largest, and have complete control over the enemy's every move. In the end, it's like following a script, Performing the act of defeating the enemy Sasuke, your movements are too risky, as if you're gambling on being able to hit the enemy with this move, Erichiha would never do that. Natsuo patted Sasuke's shoulder meaningfully. Remember, in any gamble, winning is the process, losing is the result. What the Achiha pursue is an inevitable victory under our complete control. A true Achiha is not a reckless brute. They are the victors who master everything through meticulous calculation. Therefore, every Achiha's battle can be considered an art. Natsuo had received specialized combat training from the Achiha clan. And now, he was passing on this knowledge to Sasuke. Sasuke's face was filled with excitement. Yes, Natsuo. Mastering everything, manipulating the course of the battlefield that is the power of our Uchiha. Train well. Natsuo said with a smile, shaking his head as he walked away. Sasuke was too fond of gambling. During the development of the plot of the Naruto series, Sasuke was too reckless and confident that he would be able to defeat Orochimaru, to defeat the Chiha Atachi, to overcome the Eight Tails. His arrogance, though cool, was not the Achiha way of fighting. Atachi was able to accurately weaken Sasuke to the perfect level during their intense battle, forcing Orochimaru to reveal himself. Abito was able to accurately calculate every move Kakashi made during their intense battle, causing Kakashi to destroy his own heart seal. And Achiha Madara, the king of the battlefield dance, was on a whole other level. The other side of Ichiha's arrogance is an extremely precise control. Of course, perhaps it is because of the influence of this control over manipulating the enemy and oneself. That makes each Ichiha arrogant, thinking that they can arrange everything for others as they do in battle. If Sasuke develops the habit of controlling everything, will he still recklessly gamble his life and directly seek revenge against Itachi? On the other side, Yuhi Kuranai walks on the streets of Konoha, shopping with several of Natsuo's wives. Do you think this outfit will look good on the child? This won't do, children should wear pure cotton, you should buy this kind. Hey, look at this hat with rabbit ears, it's especially cute when children wear it. That's right, this is a group of mom squads. And Yuhi Kuranai is among them, she is interested in looking at the clothes of those children. She also wants to buy one for her own child. Of course, she can only buy it with the reason of a gift for Natsuo's wife's child, otherwise she can't explain her actions. Until now, Yuhi Kuranai has not yet achieved her original goal of picking up a child outside. After all, since coming to the Achiha clan, she has not been on a mission. Either she obediently stays at home while pregnant, or she is too busy taking care of the child after giving birth. Although the child is slowly growing up now, with the care of other Achiha women, she can easily find time to go on a mission. But she is too lazy to do it. I heard that normal children need adults to watch over them all day. Otherwise they will cry if they don't see anyone for a while. Yui Koronai thinks to herself, I can still leave my child to be taken care of by other sisters in the Achiha clan. But if it's just me if she leaves the Achiha clan and returns to her own home, she will have to take care of everything herself. Baby food, clothes, supplements not to mention shopping. She will probably be busy all day. Missions and such are out of the question. Of course, she can choose not to do it. Children from normal families, when they are babies, drink milk and gradually eat adult food. Basically, they eat what adults eat and grow up the same way. 
But Kinyuhi Kurinai's child be treated casually while the other children of Natsuo eat and drink well. Kinyuhi Kurinai let her own child fall behind from the starting line. Let's wait a little longer. When the child is a little older, I will pick up the child. Yuhi Kurinai thinks to herself, and then enthusiastically starts picking out clothes. As a novice mother, she has a strong curiosity about everything related to children. She is also very enthusiastic about buying clothes. And at this moment, Koronai Sama, we finally found you. A middle-aged man runs towards her with an anxious expression. Kirama Unkai, what's the matter? Yui Koronai is taken aback. Kirama Unkai anxiously says, Koronai Sama, Yukumo is in trouble. Yuhi Kuranai's expression immediately becomes serious. Kirama clan's residence. To think it has come to this Yuhi Kuranai looks at the house next to her, that has been burned to ruins by flames, takes a deep breath, and asks, Is Yukumo alright? For now, she's fine. Kirama Unkai forces a smile and says, Only she seems to have forgotten that she did it herself. Is that so? It's good that he forgot. Yuhi Kuranai forces a bitter smile and says, She still wants to, yes. She still wants to become a ninja. Kirama Unkai also smiles bitterly. Kirama Yukumo is Yuhi Kuranai's student. Yukumo has had poor physical condition since she was young, and would get tired easily after practicing for a while. Therefore, last year, her parents stopped allowing her to study at the ninja school, and brought her back home, inviting Yuhi Kuranai to be her private tutor. Yuhi Kuranai tried to train her, but in the end, there was no improvement in her physical condition, so she later convinced Yukumo to give up on becoming a ninja. Yukumo's parents also didn't want this child's health to deteriorate further due to excessive effort, so they agreed with Yuhi Kuranai's approach. However, Yukumo didn't want that. A few days ago, it seems that she requested her father to train her as a ninja, but was rejected. As a result, in an emotional outburst, she lost control of herself, and used the Kurama clan's KK Genkai to set the house on fire, resulting in the death of her parents in the fire. And she seems to believe that it was the third Hokage at the time who sent someone to assassinate her parents, and now wants to assassinate her as well. Kurama Unkai smiles bitterly and says, Kurunai-sama, do you really have no way to help her? If there was a way, I would have said it long ago. Yuhi Kuranai shakes her head helplessly. She also feels sorry for this child, but she really has no solution. Even Kuranai-sama can't do anything. It seems that there is no one in Konoha who can help her. Kurama Unkai sighs lightly. Yuhi Kuranai's Jinjutsu is the strongest in Konoha. Yuhi Kuranai is silent for a moment as she hesitates. But in the end, she says, there may be someone in Konoha who can help her, compared to me. The Achiha clan is more skilled in Jinjutsu, and they have a lot of experience passed down from their ancestors. Perhaps you can consider seeking help from the Achiha clan. Achiha. Kurama Unkai furrowed his brows. Will they be willing? Hearing this, Yui Kuranai let out a soft sigh. The Achiha clan could be considered the most powerful in the ninja world in the use of Jinjutsu. However, they have a high opinion of themselves and are very arrogant. When Kurama Unkai encountered a problem, the Kurama clan immediately sought help from the Achiha clan. However, whether because they looked down on the Kurama clan, or because they were dissatisfied with the Kurama clan's claim of surpassing Achiha in Jinjutsu, they did not even consider the conditions proposed by the Kurama clan, and flatly refused to provide support. That's when the Kurama clan turned to Yuhi Kuranai. Recalling the arrogance of the Achiha clan in the past, Yuhi Kuranai also let out a soft sigh and said, The current Achiha clan leader, Achiha Natsuo, is not like the typical Achiha, he doesn't have as much arrogance. As long as you communicate well and present your conditions, he will definitely accept. Kurama Unkai nodded. He had also heard of Natsuo's reputation. Well, actually, it was extremely well known. After all, Natsuo was the first Achiha in history to take multiple wives, and not want to do anything else except have children. While countless shinobi mocked Natsuo for willingly falling from grace, he was also relieved that this guy was not like a typical Achiha. Natsuo, who lacked any Achiha demeanor, might actually agree to the Kurama clan's request. But isn't Natsuo only a Chunin in terms of strength? Can he really help Yukumo? Kurama Unkai furrowed his brows. Natsuo is actually quite strong, Koronai said. Perhaps we can have some expectations. Having spent so much time with the Achiha clan, she had more or less discovered some of Natsuo's hidden strength. Although he had not seen it personally, 
He believed that Natsuo was not just an embarrassment to the Jonin. At the very least, he should also be at the Jonin level, right? As for why he was hiding his true strength, that was easy to explain. He is worried about exposing his true strength and attracting retaliation from Itachi. Koronai thought to herself, but she wouldn't reveal Natsuo's true strength in front of others. She only expressed it tactfully. The Achiha clan has a long history, so they might have a way to save Kurama Yakumo. Meanwhile, on the other side, Natsuo looked at the latest news that had come in and let out a sigh. It seems that the conflict between the five great nations has escalated again. Unexpectedly, there are even renegades occupying our Achiha mine. He had originally thought that after impersonating Achiha Itachi and dealing a heavy blow to all enemies of the Achiha, no one would dare to lay a hand on the Achiha clan again. But he didn't expect that there were still those who were not afraid of death. Kurosuke Raiga, huh? Natsuo rubbed his chin as he looked at the intelligence. Kurosuke Raiga, dissatisfied with the village's policies, decided to defect, and later became the criminal boss of the Kurosuke family. He then used the Kurosuke criminal organization to take control of the Achiha mine. He probably came here because of the conflict between the five great nations. Natsuo thought to himself, due to Natsuo's actions, Konohagake entered a state of alert and preparation for war. And other ninja villages, fearing that Kanoha would attack their own countries, also sent ninjas to protect their borders, due to Kanoha's mobilization. Although a full-scale war had not broken out at the borders, there were countless hidden struggles, and losses were not insignificant. Under the state of mobilization in case of war between nations, Kurosuke Raiga, as a renegade who was not good at hiding, probably couldn't stay in other places, and had no choice but to come here. In reality, even the arrogant Kurosuke Raiga was not foolish enough to take on the Ichiha clan. For this reason, once he gained control of the mine, he sent a message to negotiate with the Ichiha clan. He probably aims to seek stability and gain a foothold with the help of the Ichiha clan. He must have noticed that the Ichiha clan is lacking in manpower, so the conditions for negotiation may be to form an alliance with his own strength and the Achiha clan. Natsuo thought to himself, perhaps in his eyes, the Achiha's deterrent power now relies solely on Achiha Itachi. The Achiha itself is severely lacking in combat power, but they can use their business empire to help him conceal his whereabouts and resist pressure from other countries. On the other hand, he has considerable combat power and can provide protection to the Achiha clan. An alliance between the two would be mutually beneficial. Who do you think you are to make demands on the Achiha clan? Natsuo shook his head. Not everyone among the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist is at the level of a cage. Natsuo doesn't even need to personally take action to deal with him. Kakuzu, I have a task for you. Take care of this person. Natsuo pointed at Raiga. The reward is an S-rank mission. I understand. Kakuzu nodded. Coincidentally, I also have something to attend to. The organization has sent a message, and I will be recalled soon. We may not be able to continue with your mission for the time being. Natsuo nodded to indicate his understanding. In the ever-changing world of the ninja world, war could break out at any moment. Akatsuki, as a mercenary group, it was only natural for them to gather their forces and complete the contracted war missions. Although the compensation that Natsuo offered was quite high, but compared to large-scale war missions, it was only average. Natsuo didn't mind. His main purpose in hiring Akatsuki was to get through the initial week period. And now that he had grown up, he didn't care if they protected him or not. Well, let's consider this a final corporation. Natsuo said with a smile. During the following time, Natsuo spent most of his time working hard on his wives. Occasionally, he would also go and see Sasuke's training. It had to be said that as a revenger, Sasuke had a fearless attitude towards training. As long as he doesn't die, he will train to the death. With this belief, Sasuke ignored the many wounds on his body. Some of these wounds had not yet healed and were torn open again. Many of the injuries were quite serious, but Sasuke didn't seem to notice. In his mind, wounds that don't cause death are just scratches. Even though Natsuo reminded him several times to rest, he would agree on the surface and then immediately start training. But there was one person who left Sasuke at a loss. Sasuke. We've come to find you. Naruto laughed heartily. Chem PH. Sasuke snorted coldly, maintaining his aloof posture and continuing his training. He gave a cold response, causing the people behind Naruto to sigh. Shikamaru. Sigh, what a bother Kiba. So why did we come all the way here, Naruto? Choji. To eat potato chips. Sakura. Naruto. Stop bothering Sasuke. He's working hard on his training. Why are you disturbing him, Sasuke? Are you thirsty? Do you want some water? I brought some refreshing lemon tea for you. Naruto casually ignored everyone's reactions, including Sasuke's. He squatted on the ground with great enthusiasm. It's snowing today, Sasuke. Let's play snowball fight. Boring. 
Sasuke coldly snorted and proudly said, Naruto, I'm not a child anymore. This kind of game is more suitable for you guys. Ignoring Sasuke, Naruto picked up a snowball and threw it at Sasuke three minutes later. Naruto, if you have the guts, don't run. Sasuke chased after Naruto, who was running ahead, shouting, Take this, Ichiha Snowball Jutsu. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Several snowballs, with a spiraling force, flew towards Naruto's back like shurikens, hitting him hard. Bang, bang, bang. You coward, Sasuke. Can't you handle it? Stop talking nonsense. Today, I'll make you realize the power of the Achiha clan. Indeed, you two are a perfect match, just like Ashura and Indra. Not far away, Natsuo calmly took a sip of tea while watching the children play. A few days later Kakuzu's mission was completed. The mere Raiga was no match for this old and still strong grandpa. However, what Natsuo never expected was that Kakuzu, the old grandpa, actually brought him a valuable gift. Natsuo, I remember you paid a high price for a cage-level female ninja, right? A rare bright smile appeared on Kakuzu's old face as he pointed to a slender figure tied up with black threads. I encountered this person when I killed Raiga. She seems to be a Kinuchi from the Karigika, trying to take the lightning blades. Although her strength is not particularly strong, she can barely be considered a cage-level Kinuchi. Natsuo, how much are you willing to pay? Kakuzu's eyes sparkled. Natsuo fell silent for a moment, squatted down, and carefully looked at the resentful face of the Kinochi who has staring at him. Well, Kakuzu was right. This person can indeed be considered a cage-level Ringo Amayuri. I'll have to offer a good price for you. Ringo Amayuri, a Kinochi from Kurigika and one of the members of the future generation of the Seven Ninja Swordsmen of the Mist, the next user of the Lightning Blades after Raiga, of course. Now that Raiga has just died, the lightning blades have fallen into Kakuzu's hands. Even Ringo Amayori, who was responsible for chasing after Raiga, has also fallen into Kakuzu's hands. She really is a cage-level female ninja. I almost forgot that there was someone like her, sighed Natsuo. Natsuo had actually considered asking Kakuzu for help in capturing a few cage-level Kinoichi. But cage-level individuals were rare to begin with, and the number of female ninjas was even fewer. The remaining cage-level Kunoichi were either Jinchuriki or village leaders. Aside from Conan, Kakuzu had no idea of any other cage-level Kunoichi. Or rather, cage-level rank is not something that is easily made public. Cage refers to the position of the leader of the five major ninja villages. And cage-level actually refers to individuals who are on the same level as them. Unlike normal rankings like Special Jonin, Jonin and Elite Jonin which are determined by the village, the cage-level shinobi of a village are difficult to determine. Kakuzu also encountered this Kunoichi in the process of capturing Raiga. Ringo Emeiri pursued and fought Raiga for the lightning blades, revealing her own strength. Normally, when the opponent is strong and the mission objective does not require a confrontation, ninjas would generally avoid unnecessary battles. But Ringo Amayori was a Kinoichi after all. Kakuzu immediately remembered the mission that Natsuo had issued back then, a mission that he couldn't complete. Without hesitation, he launched an attack and captured her at all costs. To capture her, I sacrificed three hearts. Kakuzu proudly said, with such strength even if she's not cage level, the difference is not significant. Considering her age, I think it's completely appropriate to classify her as cage level. Kakuzu was a veteran cage level ninja, and he was considered a formidable opponent among cage level ninjas. By wasting three hearts, Ringo Amayori had truly approached cage level, or perhaps a different title, semi-cage. Of course, no problem. Natsuo nodded without hesitation. You can rest assured that the reward will definitely satisfy you. Initially, Natsuo had set the price for a cage level at 300 million Ryo, plus ninjutsu. But after several subsequent increases in compensation, plus the fact that Kakuzu doesn't need ninjutsu, Natsuo directly set the compensation at 2 billion Ryo. However, Natsuo expressed that this number is too large, and it will take time to allocate the funds. It will take at least a week to process, but at the latest, within half a month, the funds will be transferred to your account. Upon hearing this, Kakuzu's old eyes lit up brightly. I'll give this guy to you, and this thing, she seems to want it, so I'll give it to you too. Kakuzu suddenly became extremely generous, and even through his mask, you could tell he was laughing. As he spoke, he handed the two swords over to Natsuo, one of the mystical swords of the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist Kiba. Then, Kakuzu, as if going crazy, his body trembled slightly, his steps were strange, and he rushed out the door. At the same time, he kept muttering, 2 billion 2 billion in fact, Ringo Amayuri's strength is slightly inferior to a normal cage level. 
so the price can be suppressed. But Natsuo didn't show any behavior of bargaining, isn't it just to fully mobilize Kakuzu's subjective initiative? Come on, Kakuzu. Natsuo secretly cheered for him in his heart. If you tie up Conan and bring her over, even if I have to sell everything, I'll come up with the money for you. Go, Kakuzu, you're the best. So, what's next? Natsuo lowered his head and looked at the woman with a stubborn expression. Ringo Emayori's expression carried a hint of resentment, but her eyes calmly looked to the side. Looking at the architecture, this is the land of fire, and this person Achiha, am I in the Achiha clan's residence in Kenora? Natsuo didn't hide the clan emblem on his body, and Ringo Emayori easily drew a conclusion. That weird clan head of the Achiha clan, the reason why that ninja brought me here, is quite simple. Ringo Emayori sighed softly. The weird clan head of the Achiha clan has a notorious reputation in the ninja world, but not a good one, but a strange one. As a Karigaka shinobi accustomed to dancing on the edge of a blade, Ringo Amayori has personally witnessed more than 30 unlucky ninjas discussing the weird clan head of the Achiha clan. They all express that this clan head is simply full and has nothing better to do. What's the use of having so many children? What can children contribute to the battle? Then they used words full of hatred and insults to curse Natsuo. The Kinoichi in the ninja world are already a minority, and you alone have taken up too many resources. So, what should we do? Many Kinoichi have volunteered to carry out espionage missions to Kanoha, so who should we marry? Then, they couldn't help but fantasize about living a day in Natsuo's life. It would be a paradise. Of course, Kinoichi discuss Natsuo more. But what they talk about more is Natsuo's gradually spreading good looks, his wealth that can rival a country, and his care for women. Ringo Amayori has always despised these things. A true shinobi solves all enemies with their own sword. The result so? I was sold to this guy. Does he want me to bear his child? Ringo Amayori quickly came to this conclusion and felt an immense sense of humiliation. Karigika values strength the most. You, a mere jonin, dare to lay a hand on me. And at this moment Natsuo stood in front of Ringo Amayori and squatted down. Your name is Ringo, right? A shinobi from Karigika. Natsuo smiled. Can we make a deal? I'll give you the lightning blades, and you help me have a child. How about that? What the hell are you thinking? Ringo Amayori immediately cursed without hesitation. A mere trash chunin, you think you can have my body? Hey, hey, hey. Natsuo laughed. You're my captive now. Do you have to be so rude? Aren't you afraid of what I might do to you? Ringo Amayori almost laughed out of anger. You, you think you can do something to me? Let me tell you. Don't think that just because I'm tied up now, you're safe. A mere jonin, with the difference in strength between us, even if all my limbs are cut off and only my body remains, I can still tear open your throat with my mouth. As she said that, she fiercely bared her teeth at Natsuo. With her unique teeth, she had quite a vicious taste. Is there a need to be so angry? Natsuo touched his chin. I remember that shinobi from Karigika seemed to value interests more and disregard ethical chastity. With your current status as a captive, would it be normal for you to refuse my request even if I promise to give you the lightning blades? Karigika is constantly engaged in internal conflicts and fist battles. Under such conditions, they naturally worship power to an extreme degree, easily overlooking issues such as chastity, which are valued more in other countries. If an ordinary Karigika shinobi could exchange their chastity for the lightning blades, they would wake up laughing even in their sleep. Agree. No way. Ringo Amayori was so angry that she wanted to bite someone. Although the atmosphere in Karigika is indeed like that, it doesn't mean that everyone is the same. With her pride and arrogance, she has no intention of compromising herself. Not to mention he's just an embarrassing jonin. It would be better to kill him. No, it's not that I can't agree to your request. Ringo Amayori suddenly lost her anger and smiled. Boy, if you agree to do something for me, I can even give you a child no. I can give you several. Oh, what is it? Natsuo asked curiously. Defeat me, and I will agree to your request. Ringo Amayori said without hesitation. Remove the restraints on me. Fight me with real weapons. And if you win, I will give birth to ten children for you. How about that? How about it? Do you dare? Her expression was full of provocation. Aren't you planning to have a harem? Without some strength, how can you have a harem? Oh, don't believe that old guy's words just now. What cage level powerhouse? I'm just a little woman. What cage level powerhouse am I? Don't worry. I'm really not strong. Your chances of winning are high. Ringo Amayori said, revealing an even more radiant smile. Mockery, disdain, and a tone that seemed like temptation. It's hard to imagine that in just a few sentences, so many meanings were intertwined. But even if she did the taunt perfectly, Ringo Amayori still believed that Natsuo would not fight her recklessly. Just a shameful jonin, 
what does he have to fight her? However, what she didn't expect was that Natsuo suddenly smiled. Okay, so it's agreed between us, no changes. Huh. Hey, isn't that enough? We're far enough from Kanoha. Where else do you want to go? Don't worry. I won't make too much noise when dealing with you, hey. I said that's enough. Ringo Amari had a dissatisfied expression on her face. She was still bound tightly, carried on Natsuo's shoulder running on the road. Ignoring Ringo's dissatisfaction, Natsuo continued to run for a full hour. I think we're far enough away now. Natsuo said as he finally put Ringo Amari on the ground. They were already very far from Kanoha, near the border. Looking around, all you could see were mountains, desolate and uninhabited. It would take more than a day to walk at the speed of an ordinary person to reach the nearest town. Is it necessary to go this far just to deal with a journey like you? Ringo Amari twisted her body in dissatisfaction. She had been shaken the whole way and felt very uncomfortable. After all, you are the first cage level Kunochi I faced. I have to show you respect. Natsuo said with a smile. Ringo Amari pouted. The first cage level Kunochi. It's as if you fought against some cage level master, hey? Can you untie the rope on me? Ringo Amari snorted. Sure. Natsuo squatted down gently. He took out a kunai and began to cut the rope. The two of them were very close at this moment. Looking at Natsuo's handsome face, a hint of something flashed in Ringo Amari's eyes but she still waited quietly for her liberation. Finally, the rope was cut. Ringo Amayori couldn't help but move her stiff limbs. This is the feeling of freedom, huh? Aren't you going to ambush me? Natsuo chuckled and said, I think this is the perfect opportunity. Ambush. On you. Ringo Amayori listened and couldn't help but laugh. Her lips curled up, laughing very loudly, almost doubling over with laughter. Hey, kid. Ringo Amayori glanced at Natsuo and said, Has lust driven you mad, destroying your reason? At least I'm a cage level. Not like you, a shame for the Jonin. Do I need to ambush you to defeat you? Natsuo, I think it's still necessary. As a shinobi, ambushing is not shameful. Ambushing is not shameful. But as a dignified cage level expert, ambushing a Jonin like you is quite embarrassing. Ringo Amayori snorted and moved her hands and feet, saying, Forget it. Why am I wasting time with you, kid? Since you have a handsome face and haven't made any moves, I'll spare you. You can leave. I won't kill you. Saying that, she turned her head and was about to leave. Natsuo ran a bit far, making her have to travel for a long time before she could return to Karigika. But having fought against that strange, masked monster and not losing any limbs, she could already consider herself very lucky. Ringo Amayori thought to herself, about to exert force with her footsteps, about to jump up in the next second. But before she could act, another figure appeared in front of her. Let's forget the idea of forgiving me, Natsuo smiled and said. Remember our agreement if I defeat you. You will have to have my child. I have been waiting for several years to find a cage level ninja willing to have my child. You really are driven mad by lust. Ringo Amayori's expression suddenly turned unfriendly. Fine, then I'll give you a lesson, so you'll know to respect power. Crack. Intense lightning flickered. Ringo Amayori's hands seemed to grasp thunder, quickly moving his body. In the blink of an eye, he appeared in front of Natsuo. She clapped her delicate hands, and two thunderbolts followed her movements, roaring together. This lightning release may not be powerful, but it serves as a lesson. However, in the next second crack, Natsuo extended both hands and easily caught Ringo Amayori's hands. Then, with a twist of his wrist, he picked her up and spun her into a somersault, before throwing her hard. Ha! Huh. Ringo Amayori was stunned, feeling as if the world was spinning. In the next second, she crashed into a pile of withered leaves not far away. Her body didn't hurt, but she was dazed from the impact. Natsuo chuckled lightly and walked up to her. You lost. Natsuo revealed a foxy smile and said, Now it's time for you to fulfill our agreement and have my child, right? Ringo Amayori finally regained her senses and stared at Natsuo with wide eyes. You aren't you a Jonin in disgrace? I never said I was a Jonin in disgrace. Natsuo replied, Ringo Amayori, no one would admit to such a thing. Anyway, you lost. Natsuo smiled. Come on, future mother of my child. Come home with me and let's have a child. Mother of my child having a child hearing these words, Ringo Amayori's face was filled with shame and anger. Do you dare to deceive me? Kid, prepare to die. She became furious and thunder roared, surging towards him. Intense thunder while flickering. Boom. The thunder struck down. For a moment, everything turned white. But there was no sign of Natsuo. Ringo Amayori's face was filled with anger as she turned her head to look beside her. There, Natsuo's figure appeared without her noticing. I knew a cage-level female ninja wouldn't easily surrender. 
So I deliberately chose this remote and uninhabited place. Natsuo sighed. But we had an agreement, isn't this going a bit too far? I don't care. Ringo and Mayuri angrily said. Just die. Shouting. The thunder was about to burst forth again. However, before the intense lightning could strike, Natsuo had already approached her directly. His Sharingan eyes spun rapidly and his hands quickly and accurately grabbed Ringo Amayori's wrist, then exerted force once again. I'm done for. Ringo Amayori was dumbfounded, she was thrown onto a pile of withered leaves again. But this time, it was a different pile of withered leaves miss, isn't it bad to break your promise like this? Natsuo sighed, casually picking up a grass stem and putting it in his mouth. What about your reputation? I don't care. Ringo Amayori's face was filled with anger and embarrassment. Besides, I'm a shinobi. Deception is the most important thing for a shinobi. So, what if I don't keep my word? Natsuo sighed. Well, then I'll just have to catch you again speaking. The figure disappeared in an instant. The next second, he appeared above Ringo Amayuri's body, leaning down and firmly suppressing Ringo Amayuri's arms with both hands, and also pressing Ringo Amayuri's legs with his knees. The entire weight of the person also pressed down. Damn it. Let go of me. Ringo Amayuri felt the man's breath on her body becoming even more embarrassed and angry, shouting repeatedly. On the other hand, Natsuo was still enthusiastically commenting on various topics. When you were tied up earlier, I didn't realize it. But now that I see you, you really are small at a height of 1.4 meters. You look like my child who hasn't graduated yet. Ringo Amayori is only 143.5 centimeters tall. What concept is this? Hun even Sakura? who will graduate in two years, is a full 148.5 centimeters. This Ringo Amayori is already an adult, but she is still smaller than 12-year-old Sakura, and she also has a fierce-looking face, a fierce yet cute look. What a fierce and cute legal loli. You, you, Ringo Amayori became even angrier. In Karigaka, anyone who commented on her height would have their feet cut off by her, forcing them to be the same height as her. But now, Natsuo is suppressing her, and she struggles with all her might, but to no avail. She can only vent her anger by shouting helplessly and desperately twisting her body. Feeling Ringo Amayori's struggles, Natsuo suddenly smiled. Hey, how about this? If I let you go, we can fight a few more times until you surrender. Are you really that kind-hearted? Ringo Amayori sneered. Of course, I'm not that kind-hearted. Natsuo smiled and said, So every time I beat you, I get a prize. A prize? Just by defeating you, I'll be able to make teas of you. He said with a mischievous smile. You bastard. Ringo Amayori was extremely embarrassed and angry, struggling even more. But after futile resistance for a while, she finally gave up in helplessness. Her small body was not skilled in competing with strength. Even if she used chakra, she still couldn't match the strength of Natsuo who had more abundant chakra. In addition to her small stature, even though she was struggling desperately, it looked like she was acting spoiled in Natsuo's arms. How could she bear it? Good, let's fight again. Ringo Amayori angrily said, This time I will definitely slaughter you. Although she had lost before, she still had strong confidence in herself. That was the confidence that came from killing in the bloody world of Karigaka time and time again. If I hadn't been careless just now, how could he have won against me? She still firmly believed so. Then I can let you go Natsuo smiled and said, Remember, now that you have agreed to this agreement, you can't play dirty anymore. I will also use force. Let go, Ringo Amayori said firmly. If I play dirty, you can use force as you please. I allow it. Anyway, she won't lose. Upon hearing this, Natsuo smiled. He stood up. Ringo Amayori also instantly stood up, taking a few steps back. The restless anger in her eyes dissipated, revealing a calm and composed gaze. This is the gaze that a shinobi uses to exert their maximum strength. Ringo Amayori's sharp eyes stared at Natsuo intently, her hands sliding slightly downward. She looked like an arrow ready to be released. But Natsuo just smiled calmly and said, Aren't you going to make a move? Fine, then I'll make the first move this time. Bang. With a dull sound Natsuo rushed forward. Ringo Amayori also hesitated for a moment, then suddenly rushed over. Bang. Fists and feet collided, emitting a muffled sound. Sweeping punches, striking palms, poking elbows, kicking legs. Both sides engaged in a back and forth, punches hitting flesh, close quarters combat, fighting head on. This time, Ringo Amayori displayed the strength of a cage level Kunochi. Clean and precise movements, powerful force, and lightning fast speed. Ordinary Shinobi couldn't even catch her shadow. Natsuo, on the other hand, had a smile on his face as he continuously threw punches and kicks. 
Every punch accurately hit Ringo Amayori's points of force, every kick perfectly disrupted her balance, every step perfectly avoided where Ringo Amayori wanted to step. Natsuo could teach Sasuke to perfectly control the Achiha fighting style, so how could he not do it himself? Ringo Amayori was trapped, feeling extremely uncomfortable. But she was, after all, a cage-level Kunoichi. She firmly defended herself and took the opportunity to find a flaw to counterattack. However, they only exchanged a few moves. Suddenly, Ringo Amayori's expression changed slightly, and her movements showed a momentary pause. It wasn't because Natsuo did something, but rather her own injuries were affecting her performance. She had just clashed head-on with Kakuzu, and was completely defeated and captured. She was already injured, although Kakuzu intended to sell her for a good price and didn't go all out. But the injuries left behind inevitably became the biggest flaw in the battle. Natsuo seized this opportunity. Just like before, he effortlessly threw Ringo Amayori out and smashed her onto a pile of dry leaves, pressing down on her with his whole body. Damn it. If I wasn't injured, how could you have defeated me? Ringo Amayori's face was full of unwillingness. She clearly shouldn't have lost so easily. That's true, I did take advantage of you this time. Natsuo nodded in agreement, then smiled. So let me solve your problem. As he spoke, his hands emitted a green light and gently touched Ringo Amayori's body. Suddenly, a warm feeling spread throughout her body. Is this medical ninjutsu? Or a rank healing jutsu? Ringo Amayori was stunned. Medical ninjas were rare treasures in Kurigika, which valued combat power. Not to mention a medical ninja who mastered a rank healing jutsu. The effect of a rank healing jutsu was very strong. Before long, Natsuo withdrew his hands and stood up. Ringo Amayori was completely healed. She stared blankly at her body, no longer feeling any pain. And all of this was thanks to that man being defeated three times in a row by this man, and having him personally heal her wounds. A complex feeling arose in her heart. Tha, thank you. Natsuo, wait. Why are you taking off your clothes? Ringo Amayori looked at Natsuo, who had taken off his shirt, revealing a body full of masculinity, and her eyes widened. Hum, did you forget? Natsuo smirked. We made a deal earlier. If I won, I would hear her Ringo Amayori. Ringo Amayori, with her long reddish hair tied up in two large pigtails. Her white skin illuminated by the sunlight. She wore a cloth around her head tied on both sides, which gave her a mysterious air. Natsuo stared into her eyes with an intense look. A subtle smile played on his lips as he advanced towards Ringo Amayori's face. The cold expression on her face did not prevent his from feeling the fire that burned inside her. Ringo Amayori. Natsuo whispered in a low, commanding voice, his warm breath brushing against her ear. You can't escape what you promised. She struggled desperately, trying to resist. But Natsuo gently pinned her down, his hand firm on her waist. Passion and desire burned in Natsuo's eyes, and he leaned in to kiss her with overwhelming intensity. Her lips merged in a passionate and dominant kiss, in which Natsuo took control of her, exploring every corner of her mouth with authority. Ringo Amayori fought with apparent strength, but his eyes betrayed surrender to the passion that burned between them. Her bodies intertwined, and he brought her even closer to him, her hands running over the delicacy of her skin, as if they were the notes of a forbidden melody. The cloth around her head slipped, revealing her reddish hair that flowed like the fire of passion that consumed them. With each kiss and each caress, Ringo Amayori's facade crumbled, and his submission to Natsuo became more and more evident. In the end she was still conquered by Natsuo. I'm going to kill you. Ringo Amayori gritted her teeth in anger after recovering. If it weren't for Natsuo pinning her down again, she would have already rushed forward. This was the first time she felt so humiliated, even more so because of how her body reacted to the situation. She swore to avenge this grudge. Natsuo innocently shrugged his shoulders. Hey, we had an agreement beforehand, and you even allowed me to use force. Can we talk it out? He suggested. Natsuo was not the kind of man who took advantage of others. Although he had many wives, none of them were forced by him. If he had not noticed that Ringo Amayori was not resisting him as much as he seemed, he would not have continued. But since the other party allowed him to use force, Natsuo was not the kind of person to let such an opportunity slip by. Ringo Amayori's face was filled with anger and embarrassment as she recalled the encounter just now. She wished she could bite this despicable man to death. Her teeth made a grinding sound. I'm going to kill you. Kill you. Clearly, she was not a reasonable woman. Whatever. Natsuo shrugged. But I can continue to let you go, as long as we stick to our agreement. Ringo Amayori struggled angrily. But in the end, she was powerless. After a battle, she was also feeling a bit weak, her limbs sore. She struggled in every way possible, 
But there was no way out. Let me go, I can promise you. Ringo Amayuri finally said in anger and embarrassment. But you have to heal all the wounds on my body first. She believed that if she were in her prime, she would never lose to Natsuo so easily. As long as she had the chance, she would definitely kill him. Natsuo was puzzled. Didn't I treat you already? I'm talking about the places where you made me bleed just now. Natsuo, are you sure you want treatment? If this wound heals, you will have to experience it again later. Natsuo kindly said. He was then glared at by Ringo and Mayuri. You don't need to worry about it. Natsuo shrugged and began the treatment. As a ninja who spared no expense to hire the chief instructor of Kinoha Hospital, learning medical ninjutsu and cellular knowledge. Natsuo's medical ninjutsu was not top-notch, but it was not bad either. However, with so many wives, no one would ask him to treat this injury. However, the fierce and cute young lady of Kurigika seems to not care much about this injury. She only cares if it will affect her combat power. Well, treating this type of wound is probably a valuable experience as well. Although it was the first time encountering this injury, Natsuo still managed to heal it. Just after Ringo Amayori finished her treatment, she decisively took action. Natsuo activated his three Tomo Sharingan and fought her head on. Ringo Amayori's movements were even more fierce than before. Because the injury had healed, her movements were large and intense, and every attack aimed at vital points. However, it only took a little effort, and soon Natsuo regained control of the situation. Not long after, Ringo Amayori saw that her Tajutsu was gradually being suppressed. So she took the initiative to use lightning release, and intense lightning flickered. Natsuo silently took out wind release. His wind release was not particularly strong, but he had received rewards from several children for his wind release, including powerful nature transformation ninjutsu. Although it couldn't compare to his most frequently used Manjekyo Sharingan, but wind release has a strong restraining effect on lightning release. Furthermore, he now has huge chakra reserves and generously infused chakra into the wind release, shattering the lightning release. Ringo Amayori finally ended up losing. Damn it. If I had the Thunder Blades, Ringo Amayori gritted her teeth. This time, her purpose in infiltrating the Land of Fire and assassinating Raiga was to obtain the Thunder Blades. Otherwise, why would any village bother to deal with Raiga with so much effort in this tense atmosphere due to a possible war? Even if Raiga was an embarrassment to the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist, he was still part of that group. However, Natsuo smiled when he heard this. It seems like you're still not convinced in that case. I'll give you another chance. This time, I'll give you the Thunder Blades. The rules remain the same. I will fight until you are convinced, and of course, don't forget, now that you've lost to me, you owe me one. Saying this, he slowly pressed down his body. Ringo Amayori gritted her teeth, her voice escaping through the gaps in her teeth. Fine. Only when Ringo Amayori held the Thunder Blades, did she truly possess cage-level combat power. Before this, she was not considered a strong individual even among the Jonin. However, once she possessed the Thunder Blades, she firmly believed that she would not lose to anyone. For revenge, I will endure this humiliation. Ringo Amayori's eyes were filled with shame, anger, and resentment. Perhaps to obtain the Lightning Blades faster and seek revenge against Natsuo, she unexpectedly took the initiative to attack with clumsy movements. I will definitely kill you. After a while Ringo Amayori, holding the Thunder Blades, attacked crazily. She had a crazy expression as if seeking revenge. After all, even though wind release restrains lightning release, Natsuo's level of wind release is definitely not a match for her lightning release, enhanced by the Thunder Blades. The violent lightning release wrapped around the Thunder Blades, and fiercely slashed towards Natsuo. This time, I will definitely Natsuo. Susanu, clang. The Thunder Blade struck Susanu as if a child hitting a stone with a plastic knife, and was instantly repelled. Ringo Amari looked confused. What kind of ninjutsu was this? Taking advantage of her momentary confusion, Natsuo directly pounced on her. It seems like it's too much to bully you with the Manjekyo Sharingan. How about this time I don't use the Manjekyo Sharingan? Do you want to fight again? Bring it on. If it wasn't for that inexplicable ninjutsu, how could I possibly lose to you? Being teased once again, Ringo Amayori tried to gather her spirits and firm her beliefs. She swung the Thunder Blades towards Natsuo, and in response, Natsuo calmly said, Jinjutsu, Sharingan. Not skilled in Jinjutsu and unable to decipher it, Ringo Amayori was directly hit. In a one-on-one -on -one situation, without worrying about teammates breaking the illusion, the Sharingan was this dominant. Natsuo was also not polite and directly pounced on her. This time I won't use Jinjutsu. Do you want to fight again? If you don't even dare to agree to this, what kind of member of the seven ninja swordsmen of the Mist am I? Ringo Amayori's eyes turned red. In a normal battle, 
who would restrict themselves to this extent. If she still didn't dare to fight, she wouldn't need to be a shinobi anymore. Ringo Amayori once again pounced, her movements swift. Natsuo's movements were also fast. Fire release. Great fire annihilation. Fire release. Great fire extinction. Fire release. Great dragon fire technique. Boom, boom, boom. Fire release swept the ground. Ringo Amayori was once again dumbfounded. The Achiha clan emblem is a fan that manipulates flames. And Natsuo didn't even care about the consumption of chakra. Although he could use some earth release, the overwhelming fire release directly overwhelmed poor Ringo. Then Natsuo calmly walked over pressing his body against hers just like before. Cough, cough this time I don't even need to use fire release. Do you dare to fight me? I don't believe I can't beat you. Ringo Amayori's eyes were red, her voice no longer as fierce as before, but rather with a hint of pitiful cuteness. Just like a child whose self-esteem has been shattered. Regrettable Natsuo commented on her appearance, then aimed with both hands. Wood release. Nativity of a sea of trees. Ringo Amayori. After a long time, Ringo Amayori collapsed onto a pile of withered leaves, her eyes lifeless, as if she had been played with too much, murmuring non-stop. Why why is it like this how many more cards do you have left? She was like a girl being stared at by a strong man. No matter how much she resisted, she couldn't change the final result. Natsuo touched his nose. Was this his fault? He couldn't restrict himself, tie his hands and feet, seal his chakra, and then use his head to fight her, right? But it was already enough. He walked towards Ringo Amayori and sat down gently next to her. How about it? Still want to fight? Natsuo smiled and said, Are you planning to obediently have children with me? What do you want to do to me? Can I even resist? Ringo Amayori laughed bitterly, self-mockingly. It's Manjekyo Sharingan again, would release again, and that exaggerated chakra this is the power that a shameful jonin should have. The entire ninja world looks down on this guy. Don't say that I've never liked forcing girls. Natsuo smiled. Even between you and me, didn't you agree to it? Upon hearing this, Ringo Amayori's face turned red with anger. Yes, I did agree to it, but I never expected you to be this strong. If you help me have a child, I'll give you the Thunder Blades. Natsuo smiled. Actually, I originally planned to trade the Thunder Blades with you, but you insisted on being difficult. I was originally going to give you the Thunder Blades for giving birth, but now if you don't give birth to three, don't even think about leaving the Achiha clan. So, are you willing? What if I'm not willing? After all, I can't resist you. Ringo Amayori turned her head away. Since I'm a defeated subordinate, naturally the winner can say whatever they want. Seeing this, Natsuo finally showed a happy smile. This guy finally surrendered. He slowly pressed down on her body. Ringo Amayori's body stiffened, but she didn't resist. Cage level Kinochi, indeed difficult to handle. After all the struggle, she finally surrendered by lifting her legs. But the sense of accomplishment is indeed fulfilling before long, another wife joined the Ichiha clan. Although this cage level Kunochi's agreement with Natsuo was only to bear three children, Natsuo still treated her as a wife. After all, she was a cage level Kunochi. In Natsuo's harem she is the first cage level Kunochi. Natsuo who rarely revealed most of her strength repeatedly defeated Ringo Amayori. He completely crushed her in every shinobi aspect. Although he still had the techniques of the Manjekyo Sharingan and other secret techniques, and had not used the Susanoo to its full power. But if this news were to be exposed, it would definitely shock the ninja world. Of course, he wasn't worried about Ringo Amayori doing anything impulsive. The agreement between Natsuo and Ringo Amayori was to simply have three children, and give her the Thunder Blades, which was considered generous. Until these three children were born, Ringo Amayori had to obediently stay at the Achiha clan's residence, and would find it difficult to act orationally. And after bearing three children, it takes ten months to carry a child. Considering the time for nurturing and preparing for the next child, it would take at least a year to give birth to another child, and then another two months for the body to recover enough to conceive again. And this is the fastest speed, in reality. It's not so easy for a woman to get pregnant, right? According to Natsuo's experience, even if he relentlessly attacked the Kinochi during their dangerous periods, it would generally take two months of effort to barely get them pregnant. So, three children would take about four years. And four years later even according to the Naruto series timeline, it would be close to the end. What would Natsuo be afraid of at that moment? With his current rate of becoming stronger, he might not even be defeated if the entire ninja world attacked him together. Natsuo brought Ringo Amayori to the house and began his crazy attack. After finally subduing a cage-level Kinochi, wouldn't it be a waste if he didn't work hard to have a child? For a while, Natsuo almost stayed in Ringo Amayori's room day and night even during non-dangerous times. He worked hard, 
hoping to make her pregnant as quickly as possible. A child born to a cage-level mother, how amazing would that be? Along with the growth of his own potential, Natsuo was sure that it would bring him a big surprise. So, he worked like crazy. A month and a half later, Ringo and Mayuri successfully became pregnant. At the same time, Yuhi Kurinai, who had resisted so much before but now had become accustomed to the Achiha clan's life, also became pregnant. Her pregnancy was actually an accident, although the child had already been born, and Yuhi Kurinai was becoming more and more accustomed to the life of the Achiha clan. But the few remaining traces of pride in her heart still held on to her bottom line of not becoming Natsuo's wife. But the bottom line is something that can be broken after all. After getting used to the hugs and caresses, the actions became a little more inappropriate between them, and she gradually accepted all of that. After that, whatever was done became more and more normal. As a result, after an accidental moment of passion, Yuhi Kurinai gradually let go, and then an accident happened at the same time. During this time, in addition to Natsuo's ordinary wives, the jonin sent by Orochimaru also began to give birth. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 101, you gain chakra plus eight, magnet release. Hidden magnetism technique. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 103, you gain chakra plus eight, storm release. Great Raptor Technique. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 106, you gain chakra plus eight impressive as expected of a jonin. In addition, Natsuo, who is constantly getting stronger, actually received a score of over 100. Natsuo's body is constantly getting stronger at a visible speed. As for those Jutsuo's rewards that can only be used with a specific Keke Jankai, Natsuo doesn't really give it much thought anymore. Among the Keke Jankai, apart from a few major clans like Yuzumaki, Hayuga, Ichiha, Senju, there aren't many that are particularly powerful. Or rather, it's not that these bloodlines aren't strong enough, but for Natsuo now, he doesn't really think highly of them anymore. Magnet release, storm release. No matter how much he accumulates, it's only at the level of a cage. For Natsuo now, they are useful, but not as useful as the chakra and mental power rewards. At most, they can be considered as enriching his own means. Perhaps in the future, he can use these unique KK Genkai to go to other ninja villages and establish an identity. But that's about it. Continue to work hard, keep it up. Natsuo cheers himself on. I can do it. Then he turns and walks into the chambers of his wives, starting a new round of efforts for the revival of the Achiha clan. During this period, Natsuo continues to work hard as usual, apart from occasionally teaching Sasuke in his training and teaching Naruto how to pick up girls. He doesn't have much other work. The shinobi world is still in turmoil, as if a full-scale war is about to break out at any moment. But no one dares to say when exactly, and who will be the one to start the first battle. Of course, all these upheavals do not affect the children of the ninja school. They are in their daily classes. Today is the most revealing segment to showcase the students' abilities. Combat practice. You guys just wait. Naruto proudly puffs up his chest and says, I've been consulting Natsuo for a long time, and I feel like I've mastered the essence of picking up girls. This time, I will definitely make Sakura and the others look at me with new eyes. Oh, is that so Sasuke responds indifferently, his mind seemingly replaying a certain battle. Sasuke was now able to return to school, and the previous incident of violence had completely dissipated. He remains the center of attention, the school's number one ninja who countless classmates admire. In the eyes of these classmates, someone like Sasuke who attracts the attention of all the girls is enviable. But in Sasuke's eyes, this attention is really useless. Even if many women beat around the bush and say things like, Sasuke, I also want to help you revive the Achiha clan, which is almost like a confession, Sasuke dismisses it. You all talk about wanting to contribute to the revival of the Achiha clan every day. Why don't you go find Natsuo? Sasuke snares in his heart. Besides, you can't even bear children now. Why bother me? It's just that he thinks his classmates are too young and can't bear children yet. Otherwise, he would have taken this group of self-proclaimed willing to contribute to the revival of the Achiha clan female classmates to find Natsuo long ago. You want to contribute to the Achiha clan, right? Then go and work with Natsuo to have children for the Achiha clan. Just talking won't revive the Achiha clan. Of course, Naruto has no idea about Sasuke's inner thoughts. When he sees Sasuke's indifferent attitude, he gets angry. Sasuke, do you think I'm insignificant? Do you think I can't be handsome? I'll tell you. This time I specifically learned the essence from Natsuo. Soon, I'll be popular. And you, Sasuke, can only envy and hate me with your saliva. Sasuke, I envy the hell out of it. I even want to push the women who surround me every day to Natsuo. Do you think I would be envious? 
And at this moment Aruka finally calls the names. Now, the next match Sasuke versus Naruto. It's finally my turn. Naruto shows excitement on his face. He jumps up suddenly, walks towards the center of the training field, and adopts a cold and indifferent expression. Sasuke, on the other hand, walks slowly, advancing in the opposite direction of Naruto, with his hands in his pockets, as if to say, I am Ichiha Sasuke. I don't know what it feels like to have a worthy opponent. Suddenly, many girls screamed. Ah, Sasuke is so handsome, so cool. Is this the young master of the Achiha clan? I really want to help him revive the Achiha clan. Are you trying to help Sasuke revive the Achiha clan? You just want to take advantage of him, you scum. A series of screams made Naruto's mouth twitch. Looking at Sasuke, he also felt a bit envious. It's okay. Naruto encouraged himself. Yesterday, I shamelessly pestered Natsuo and asked him to help me come up with a cool line. This time, there will be no problem. Compared to Natsuo, Sasuke is nothing he's just my Naruto thought to himself. Naruto took a deep breath and regained his composure. Sasuke, come at me. He beckoned dismissively. Considering you're Natsuo's younger brother, I'll give you three moves. After three moves, then I'll make my move. The girls nearby were indignant. Naruto, how dare you let Sasuke have three moves? Sasuke, beat him up. Naruto, you can't even beat me, and you want to fight Sasuke. Take a look at yourself. Sasuke also looked helpless. What's wrong with this guy again? Did you drink expired milk today? Sasuke sneered. Loser, when did you start thinking that I need three moves to defeat you? Naruto's expression turned angry upon hearing this, and he approached with a domineering momentum. Very well, you have completely angered me. I promise you won't see tomorrow's sunrise. His voice carried a hint of gloom mixed with a chilling intent to kill. Even the girls next to him were stunned and dared not speak for a moment. Seeing this, Naruto's eyes shine with joy. Yes, this set of lines was designed by Natsuo for Naruto. Using it really had an outstanding effect. Are my popular days finally coming? Looking at the girls who were overwhelmed by his momentum, Naruto felt ecstatic in his heart. On the other hand, Sasuke remained silent for a moment, then sighed. Tomorrow, you idiot Naruto, as a ninja, you can't even see that there will be a heavy rain tomorrow. On such a day, there is no sun. I'll give you a chance to repeat it. How about that? For example, can't see tomorrow's heavy rain. Perhaps it was because he was familiar with Naruto. Or perhaps it was the influence of Naruto saying, lines designed by Natsuo. Sasuke, rarely serious when considering Naruto, offered his own suggestion. EFFT. The girls couldn't hold back and burst into laughter. Sakura even laughed until tears came out, unable to see the sun tomorrow. Well, because it will rain tomorrow, Damn it, Naruto. What should I do now? Natsuo, what should we do about this question that is beyond the scope? Damn it, Sasuke, it's all your fault. Naruto finally became angry and rushed forward. In the end, Naruto was suppressed by Sasuke. Although compared to his version from the same period in the Naruto series, Naruto has received some guidance from Natsuo during his free time when Natsuo was teaching Sasuke. The wealthy Natsuo occasionally treats them, the students, to meals, providing them with sufficient nutrition. Compared to his other version, Naruto's strength could be said to have changed greatly. But Sasuke's changes are even greater. Not only does Natsuo occasionally guide Sasuke's training, but even Natsuo's wives occasionally give Sasuke some advice. After all, Sasuke is their younger brother-in-law. Although he is full of arrogance, Natsuo's wives still take care of him. And the weakest of Natsuo's wives, Yukino, has now learned many ninjutsu from the Ichiha clan's ninja library, and has the combat power of a chunin. Among them, strong individuals like Kurunai and Anko even have the strength of a jonin. So teaching Sasuke is naturally effortless. Sasuke's progress is much greater than his version in the Naruto series. Damn it. How did I fail again? Why is my luck so bad? Naruto walked out of the school gate with a troubled expression. The lines taught by Natsuo seem to be flawless, and the female classmates are also amazed. It can be said that if Naruto defeats his opponent with overwhelming advantage next, he might really gain a group of fans. But the problem is that Sasuke is not cooperating. A single phrase, it will rain tomorrow, completely crushes Naruto's style. Maybe cool quotes don't go well with Naruto. The plan was clearly perfect, but in the end, it failed never mind, I'll go home and train properly one day. I will defeat you, arrogant Sasuke. Naruto thought as he walked towards his home. However, just as he reached a sparsely populated area, his shoulder was suddenly grabbed by someone. Naruto, wait, Sasuke. 
Naruto was stunned, then immediately showed an expression of so this is your level. Isn't this the wrong way to your house, you useless Sasuke? Don't you even recognize the road? Sasuke looked at Naruto helplessly, but still grabbed him. Don't talk, come with me, I'll take you somewhere. After a while, Sasuke brought Naruto to the Ichiha nightclub. Sasuke looked at the club's sign, determined. I secretly arrived at the club earlier. But my Sharingan did not evolve. Research shows that it's because there were no acquaintances present, and my emotions couldn't be stimulated to the highest point of shame. Now that I brought Naruto here, I'm definitely going to evolve the Sharingan. A club? What is this place, Sasuke? Why did you bring me here? Stop talking nonsense, come with me. To action, Sasuke transformed as usual and moved forward. Although Naruto was lacking in other ninja techniques, he was quite skilled in the transformation technique. In the future, he could even develop Jutsu. Sexy and Jutsu. Harem. Although the two of them were young, they entered together quite easily. However, the further Naruto went, the more anxious he felt. Sasuke, what kind of place is this? Naruto looked around at the sexy and alluring ladies in black stockings, shocked. Despite always saying lines like I want to have a harem, I want to learn from Natsuo, Naruto was actually still innocent. This place Sasuke pondered for a moment. To put it in Natsuo's words, it's a place that is incompatible with gambling and drugs. Naruto. Naruto didn't understand and wanted to ask further. Don't waste time, Naruto. Sasuke grabbed Naruto's hand and said, follow me. He didn't have the heart to explain in detail, as Sasuke was also inexperienced. Sasuke held onto Naruto and headed straight for the lobby manager. Although he was shy, Sasuke had some experience. Naruto, on the other hand, was being pulled along by Sasuke. Along the way, he saw the teasing gazes of the ladies around him, and heard the soundproof rooms in the hotel, which had excellent sound insulation, but couldn't block the hearing of a ninja. His face suddenly turned red. This, could this be? A nightclub. Naruto didn't say these words out loud, but as a ninja, he actually understood it. He was already sure that Sasuke had brought him to that kind of place, and he became even more embarrassed. Sasuke, why did you bring me to a place like this? Naruto panicked and whispered to Sasuke in a deliberately low voice. Let's just leave. This place isn't suitable for the two of us. Sasuke, however, glanced disdainfully at Naruto and said, In school, you were always talking about wanting to have a harem, wanting to slay a hundred people. Now you're scared. Coward. I can't believe you were still shouting about wanting to be Hokage. Isn't it just like shouting about having a harem, just empty words? Using Naruto's life goal of becoming Hokage as a provocation, Naruto immediately became indignant and said, How can I be a coward? I am the future fifth Hokage. How could I be a coward? It's just a nightclub, right? Sasuke, no matter how big of a game you play today, I, Naruto, will accompany you. But even though he said that his words were full of momentum, however, Naruto still looked around nervously. Sasuke saw it, but didn't say much. Because he was also quite nervous, but his pretending to be calm saved him at this moment. Even though he was not much calmer than Naruto in his heart, he still approached the manager and called for escorts in a seasoned manner. Sasuke doesn't have much interest in women. Although he doesn't love the flat-chested Sakura, he can eventually accept her. He ignores the sexy Ino. He ignores the innocent Hinata. He ignores the exciting Karen but as a person full of utilitarianism. Sasuke understands which type of person can stimulate him the most. So, he left all the big-breasted and big-bottomed ones. And then he called them all to his side. Come on, start serving me. Sasuke took a deep breath resembling a martyr about to sacrifice himself. Yes, young master. The escorts bowed slightly and walked up with radiant smiles. Beside them, Naruto was momentarily stunned. He originally thought that Sasuke would share something with him, and he was still conflicted about whether he should accept it or reject it to show his stance before accepting it. But now reality told him, you're thinking too much. Wait, Sasuke. Naruto couldn't help but say, you're paying for all of them. Yeah. Sasuke took a deep breath trying to calm his inner shame. Honestly, doing something indecent in front of classmates was indeed quite exciting. It's just a pity that the person is Naruto. If it were a girl like Sakura who admired him, Sasuke pondered for a moment, then shook his head. Forget it. Although he was indeed willing to pay any price for the advancement of the Sharingan, he didn't want to make himself infamous. Although Naruto was mischievous, he was still very tight-lipped about such matters, and wouldn't make a big fuss about it. No, don't you understand what I mean? Naruto said. I mean, can you handle so many people? I have no choice. I have to persevere no matter how hard or tired it is. Well, actually, I can help you, okay? You can watch over me Naruto hesitated, wanting to speak, but also wanting to stop himself from speaking. In the end, unable to hold back, he directly said, Sasuke, 
What I mean is you called me over just to watch you enjoy it. What else? At the very least maybe. You shouldn't have invited me along. Naruto pondered for a while before finally uttering these words. Sasuke, upon hearing this, raised his head and glanced at Naruto expressionlessly, saying, If you want to play, you have to pay for it yourself. It's a joke. He was here specifically to experience shame. After all, the first time he came he managed to awaken the Sharingan. He didn't really form a group with his classmates to find girlfriends. Naruto, paying money well, spending money can indeed provide the same services as Sasuke. Girls are not a problem either. Besides, there are other people. Just talking about the girls that Sasuke rejected earlier, there are many who fit Naruto's preferences. But the problem is that Naruto doesn't have money. Actually, Naruto has quite a bit of money. Although the third Hokage used various means to make many people in Konoha resent Naruto, in order to facilitate his own warmth towards Naruto, establish a stable relationship, and hold on to the Jinchuriki. But when it comes to money, he is also generous towards Naruto. At the very least, he doesn't have to worry about food and drink. Even if Naruto has the personality of a child who always likes to buy this and that, he can still ensure that there is milk and other food in the refrigerator. Kinoha wouldn't be short of a little child's money. But the nightclub is a place that sells gold, and the Achiha club is specifically aimed at the high-end crowd. How could Naruto, a mere student, afford it? It's only Sasuke. Although he gave up the position of Achiha clan leader to Natsuo, and left most of the Achiha's inheritance to Natsuo as well. But Natsuo also gave him a lot of pocket money. His pocket money is even higher than a Jonin's income. Sasuke has enough money to buy enough services and maximize the enhancement of his eyes. For revenge, I can spare no expense. A hint of madness flashed in Sasuke's eyes, as he suppressed the embarrassment in his heart, his muscles completely tense. Naruto, beside him, also had a hint of madness in his eyes. However, his thoughts were different from Sasuke's. He was contemplating a question. May I ask, is throwing a classmate out of a third floor window considered illegal behavior? Sasuke naturally won't resort to real action. After all, if he really did it, what if he ended up getting used to it? The emotions she might experience on future occasions would decrease considerably. But even just by observing, after experiencing so much stimulation although Sasuke didn't directly promote his Sharingan, he felt as if he had made great progress in his mind. A warm current flowed through his mind, but due to issues like lack of follow-up, it ultimately only lightly brushed past. Could this be a precursor to the promotion of the Sharingan? Sasuke suddenly became excited. Although I failed this time, if I put in more effort next time, I might be able to promote the Sharingan again. The feeling of shame can truly stimulate the progress of the Sharingan. Sasuke successfully proved this point. Of course, he believed that the main reason for his failure to promote this time was Naruto. Although Naruto initially glared at Sasuke with gritted teeth for a long time, he soon couldn't help but want to leave since I don't have any money. I can't do anything. Is staying here just for the sake of looking into the distance. Sasuke made a decision and made countless promises. Like buying you potato chips, buying you manga, buying you ice cream, grilled meat skewers. But it only kept Naruto stable for a while. And in the end, he couldn't bear it and chose to leave even if it meant not having these things. Sasuke sighed helplessly and could only follow along and leave. Next time, next time I'll bring Naruto along. I should be able to promote the Sharingan. Sasuke thought to himself. Of course, he also took care of Naruto's mood as the tool. And after leaving the club, he headed straight to the commercial street, buying all sorts of delicious food and stuffing Naruto's arms full. Sasuke believed that with this premise in place, he should be able to bring Naruto along next time. And then he would definitely be able to promote the Sharingan. But Naruto was thinking something else. I need to save money. Naruto secretly encouraged himself. Next time, I absolutely can't just stand by Sasuke's side. I also want to experience it. The feeling of just being able to watch from the sidelines was too pitiful. It was simply something a man couldn't accept. As for now eat. Eat more. Eating enough. I can skip dinner when I get home tonight and save a meal's worth of money. Naruto took a big bite of meat skewer and felt very satisfied. Sasuke looked at Naruto's happy expression and also felt satisfied. The camaraderie between classmates quickly warmed up meanwhile the Achiha residents welcomed a unique guest. Hello, I'm from the Kurama clan. I've come to visit Kurama Unkai, accompanied by Kurama Yakumo, dressed in formal kimono with a respectful attitude. He finally came. There's no other way. The problem that even Kanoha's strongest Jinjutsu ninja, Yuhi Kurinai, can't solve can only be resolved by the Achiha clan. Kurama Unkai, welcome. The Achiha clan greets the esteemed guest. Natsuo also spoke with formalities and welcomed him in. Or rather, this is the only job Natsuo has besides having children and maintaining the Achiha clan's business empire. 
building good relationships with other clan leaders. That's the chief's job. He brought the two Kurama clan members to the reception room. After a few cups of tea, Kurama Unkai didn't hide anything and directly explained his request. I hope you can help Yukumo. Kurama Unkai lowered his head and said in a deep voice, This is the only hope for our Kurama clan. The Achiha clan has a long history and rich heritage. You are the only way for me to solve my niece's problem. Please. As he said that, he bowed down directly. Yukumo let me assess the situation first. Natsuo pondered for a moment and spoke, saying that he walked to Yukumo's side and confidently observed this unique girl. Kirama Yukumo was very beautiful, perhaps because she hadn't been outside for a long time. Her skin was extremely fair, almost pale which formed a sharp contrast with her reddish-brown hair. Placed among the beautiful wives of the Achiha harem, her appearance is top-notch. Natsuo pinched her hand, pressed her muscles, and activated his Sharingan, carefully staring into her eyes, a very powerful mental power. Natsuo withdrew his hand. Even without taking action, I can feel a faint pressure this child should have the highest talent among your Kurama clan. Yes, that's true. Kurama Unkai sighed bitterly. But it's precisely because it's too high that her body can't bear it. Yakumo's situation is simple. Her body is oppressed by an excessively powerful mental power. The Kurama clan's training method is related to illusion techniques. The more they train their mental power, the stronger it becomes. But it also oppresses the body, making it weaker. The gap between the two sides becomes larger and larger, of course. The Kurama clan has also considered methods to first train the body. However, under the influence of the overpowering mental power that has already oppressed the body, it is difficult for the body to even practice, it has become a deadlock. However, Yukumo carries the expectations of the clan. She desires to become stronger and always wants to train in the end, it triggered that disaster. Kurama Unkai fell silent for a moment and finally revealed the incident of Yukumo's subconscious killing her parents. Yukumo scoffed at this, clearly thinking that the third Hokage wanted to kill me. Not like what you said. Her expression was visible to everyone, but no one paid attention to it. After all, people with mental illness always claim that they are not mentally ill, which is an unsolvable problem. In essence, it is the problem of her excessively strong mental power and the inability to train her body. We can consider finding a way to seal off Yukumo's mental power. Natsuo thought for a moment and said, I also don't have a way to quickly strengthen her body. So while I seal her mental power, I will train her body until it is strong enough to withstand her own mental power. This should be the best solution. The third Hokage also said the same, but Kirama Unkai paused. There is no one in Kanoha who can complete this task. He and the third Hokage initially relied on Yuhi Kurunai to solve this problem, but she ultimately failed as well. Faced with the formidable mental power of Kurama Yukumo and the monster deep within her heart, she was completely powerless. Is that so? Then I have no other options. Natsuo calmly said, but considering the relationship between our two clans, I can allow Yukumo to go to the Echeha clan's library to study literature on mental power. Perhaps it will be helpful to her. The relationship between the two clans. What kind of relationship do the two clans have? With Natsuo's strength, the problems that Yuhi Koronai cannot solve may not be unsolvable for him. But why bother? To solve Yakumo's problem, it requires a stronger mental power than Yakumo's in order to suppress his subconscious. This requires exposing Natsuo's strength. Although as Natsuo becomes stronger, he cares less and less about hiding himself, but the Kurama clan is not important enough for him to expose himself just to help them. Allowing Yakumo to go to the Achiha clan library to consult literature is already giving them enough respect. Anyway, even if I help, Kurama Yakumo won't marry me. Natsuo thought indifferently. Then, it is better to wait for when I expose my strength, and at that time I will see if I will save her. Kurama Yakumo is the most talented bloodline of the Kurama clan and will not marry just anyone. Not to mention that Kurama Yakumo is still young, not yet of legal age, and not suitable for marriage. Of course, he also doesn't want to see such a lovely girl looking sickly. So, helping to solve this problem in the future is the way to go. Anyway, this time won't be too long. According to the original timeline of the Naruto series, the fourth great shinobi war will end seven years later. And judging by the tension between the great nations, war could break out at any moment, which would reduce the waiting time even further. By then, Yukumo will surely still be safe and sound, so there's no problem in waiting. Thinking of this, Natsuo calmly picked up a cup of tea and took a sip. The conversation is almost over. It's time to serve tea and send off the guests. However, what he didn't expect was after a moment of silence, Kurama Unkai suddenly gritted his teeth and spoke up. Ichiha Natsuo, if I allow Kurama Yukumo to marry you, 
Will you do everything in your power to help her solve this problem? EFFT. Natsuo sprayed out a mouthful of tea. He looked at the determined Kurama on Kai, then glanced at the slightly lowered and somewhat shy Kurama Yakumo. What? Marry me. Marry this underage girl. Natsuo's reaction was intense, causing him to spit out the tea he was drinking. Are you sure you want to do this? Kurama Unkai, it doesn't seem quite appropriate, right? Kurama Unkai let out a sigh. He actually didn't want to marry off Kurama Yakumo so early. After all, she was the only bloodline successor of the Kurama clan. The only one with an awakened Keke Genkai, and a peerless genius whose body was collapsing due to her overwhelming talent. But not doing this was even worse. Because she was already at a loss. The excessively powerful mental power made Kurama Yakumo's body weaker, and would continue to deteriorate over time. If there was still a glimmer of hope now, the longer they waited, the smaller that hope would become. And the power of the Kurama clan in Kanoha was becoming increasingly weak. Originally, the Kurama clan had contributed several Jonin and Chunin to Kanoha, but as time went on, the Kurama clan gradually declined, and now they didn't even have a single Jonin. Apart from the prestigious reputation inherited from their ancestors, they were just a small and unremarkable ninja clan. Of course, similar to the Achiha clan who experienced annihilation, the Kurama clan, which had no internal conflicts, still had a solid foundation, and never lacked money. Just like the Achiha clan, which has been oppressed by others after its decline, the Kurama clan has also been subjected to various forms of bullying. Their weakened strength has made it impossible for them to preserve the wealth accumulated by their ancestors. Now, Kurama Yakumo is the only hope of the Kurama clan. Her existence is more important to the clan than the clan leader, Kurama Ankai. The Kurama clan needs a strong individual who can handle the situation, and Yakumo is currently the only clan member who has the potential to support the Kurama clan. Kurama Ankai sighed deeply. To the best of my knowledge, there is no one better than the Achiha clan at dealing with mental power clan leader Natsuo. You are Yakumo's only hope, and the Kurama clan's only hope. Then, she described the current situation of the Kurama clan, and made an effort to express her sincerity. Natsuo nodded slightly. The Kurama clan has a low presence in Kanoha, and he doesn't know much about them. But precisely because of their low presence, it proves the truthfulness of Kurama Ankai's words. Even Yakumo's obsession with training, and even the fact that her parents forbade her from training, leading to the eruption of her inner demons and the death of her parents, is probably influenced by the current situation of the Kurama clan. As the only awakened bloodline in the present, the Kurama clan has placed too many expectations on her. These expectations have overwhelmed her and created her inner demons. For your Kurama clan, this is like shaking their foundations. Natsuo sighed softly. No Kinochi with an awakened Keke Genkai has the right to choose her own marriage in a shinobi clan. Kinochis from families with Keke Genkai usually only marry within their own clan, and it is rare for them to marry outside. For example, in the Naruto series, in the future Yamanaka Ino would marry Sai, but it was Sai who joined the Yamanaka clan, instead of Ino forming a new family with Sai. For the Kurama clan, it would be a huge loss for one of their members to marry outside the clan. Well, we have to solve the problem on her body. Kurama Unkai sighed bitterly. If this continues, Yakumo may not live past 20, as long as you can solve the problem on Yakumo's body. The Kurama clan will have no objections. Of course, Yakumo's situation is special. She is allowed to marry you, but we hope that she can still carry the name of the Kurama clan. Incomplete missions for Kanoha. Kurama Unkai said in a deep voice. We hope that the first male child she gives birth to will be raised by the Kurama clan. And unless the Achiha clan's Sharingan awakens, we hope that child will belong to the Kurama clan. Yakumo's talent is too high. According to Bloodline Theory, her child will definitely inherit a considerable amount of talent. The rise of the Kurama clan is within reach. Of course, all of this is on the condition that Natsuro can solve the problem on Yakumo's body. But Kurama Unkai doesn't think it's a big issue. Although Ichiha Atachi has a notorious reputation, he definitely has some kind of connection with the Ichiha clan. Kurama Unkai thought to himself, maybe he regretted wiping out the Ichiha clan and still hopes to return to the Ichiha clan. Even though Ichiha Atachi committed the act of wiping out the clan, can you see any signs of a clan annihilator in his subsequent assistance to the Ichiha clan? There are rumors that he personally told Daimyo, everything related to the Ichiha clan belongs to me. If you harm the Ichiha clan, you harm my interests. This information has been circulating among the major clans for a long time and cannot be faked. Perhaps Ichiha Atachi has a close connection with Natsuo in secret. Natsuo may not be able to heal Yakumo, 
but a Chiha Atachi might be able to. If the chances of healing were not extremely high, Kirama Unkai would not have directly approached with the intention of marrying off Yakumo. This marriage, which involves the most talented individuals within the clan, cannot be decided by the clan head alone. It must have gone through high-level discussions within the clan Natsuo certainly didn't think of this at first, but under Kirama Unkai's repeated hints, he quickly understood. So, you came for a Chiharitachi, Natsuo said helplessly. But it doesn't really matter, the difference is not significant. Yakumo, what do you think? Natsuo turned his head and asked, Do you want to marry me? Yakumo's fair face blushed with shyness, but her words were resolute. As long as you can heal my body and allow me to practice normally, I am willing to do it. In her eyes, there was a firm determination. I want to become a shinobi, this is my dream. Moreover, this is also for the clan. She and Natsuo met for the first time today, and there were no feelings between them. Although she was very satisfied with Natsuo's appearance, it was too exaggerated to say that she liked him and wanted to marry him at first sight. But many times people are not in control, especially shinobi clan. They all have the responsibility to give everything for the clan like Natsuo who works hard to take wives and find excellent partners at all costs, and works hard to provide for the family every night and soothe the emotions of each wife during the day. Why is he working so hard? Isn't this also for the revival of the clan? Who made Natsuo love the Achiha clan so deeply? I understand. As a fellow clan member who also needs to go through fire and water for the clan, I understand your feelings and admire your dedication, Natsuo pondered for a moment. But your age what's wrong with my age? Kirama Yakumo looked puzzled. According to Kinova's laws, I am already eligible for marriage. Kirama Unkai seems to have more thoughts and understanding than Yakumo. Are you saying that Yakumo is not at the optimal age for conception yet? But that shouldn't be a problem. Her body is weak and she can't start getting pregnant right away. Natsuo opened his mouth. Well, according to Kanova's laws, Yakumo doesn't have any problems. After all, Kanova's laws have always encouraged girls to have children early, which seems to be a custom passed down from the Sengoku period, considering that the average lifespan during the Sengoku period was only 30 years. If you don't have children early, you won't see them grow up. Although I don't feel comfortable in my heart. After all Yakumo is fair and beautiful. Let's consider that I am raising another future wife along with Karen. The key is that the Kurama clan is comparable to the Achiha clan in the field of Junjutsu. And Yakumo possesses the strongest mental power of the Kurama clan to the extent that even Yui Kurenai, who already has Jonin level strength, cannot solve it. Considering Yakumo's young age, her mental power has not yet reached its peak. In comparison, if it were the Achiha clan, this is equivalent to being born with the formidable talent of the Manjekyo Sharingan. If her body can withstand it, this girl could at least become cage level. Since that's the case, then wait for my news. I'll think of a way to see if I can solve Yukumo's problem. Natsuo pretended to ponder for a moment and spoke. Previously Natsuo said that he couldn't solve Yukumo's problem. But the moment they said she could marry you, then you can solve it. Natsuo didn't want to embarrass Kurama and Kai too much. Just pretend to prepare for a few days, just to give a hint. Kurama Unkai and Kurama Yakumo, however, thought that Natsuo intended to contact a Chiharitachi and needed some time. So, Kurama Unkai pondered for a moment and said to Yakumo, Yakumo, you should stay in the Achiha clan for now. It will also be convenient for some inspections. Yes, uncle. Yakumo also understood the deeper meaning in his uncle's words and nodded. From then on, Kurama Yakumo moved to the Achiha clan. She worked diligently, helping Natsuo's wives take care of the children, and with a clumsy but hardworking attitude, she took the initiative to help with some household chores. Even though as a member of the Kurama clan, she had never done such things before. But she still tried her best to perform well. Every time she saw Natsuo, she held her head high, showing her most spirited appearance. At the same time, she clumsily imitated the appearance she saw in a movie somewhere, playing with her hair and posing to seduce Natsuo. Seeing this, Natsuo couldn't help but want to laugh. But Yukumo was still trying her best, despite marrying into the Ichiha family which she didn't know at all, she was filled with anticipation. She didn't care about the benefits of marrying into the Achiha family at all. But the premise of marrying into the Achiha clan is to solve her own physical problem. This means that once she marries into the Achiha clan, she can start training. This has been her dream since she was young. So, in reality, she wants to marry Natsuo as quickly as possible. Natsuo has also started to put on a show these days, occasionally going to the Achiha clan library to look up some information. Although it is a waste of time, 
It is worth it when you consider the potential benefits of having a wife with the potential to reach the cage level. At the same time as reading, he can also take the opportunity to do his own experiments when no one is around. With Natsuo's increasing medical knowledge, his experiments have gradually made new progress. A potion derived from Jugo's cells that can enhance a person's physical strength has been made. Once used while exchanging for power, the ultimate result is a significant reduction in lifespan, and it may even die in the explosion of power. This is obviously not what Natsuo wants. He just casually sells these semi-finished potions on the black market in exchange for experimental funds. After all, he spent quite a bit of money on Ringo Amayuri, a cage-level Kunoichi. In order to encourage Kakuzu's enthusiasm, this money must not be owed. This has led to some financial constraints in the Achiha clan recently. I have to continue researching. Natsuo looked at the various reagents in the bottles and jars, feeling excited. It's not far from being able to research a potion that is suitable for all my wives. While Kurama Yakumo tried to gain Natsuo's goodwill, she received praise from Natsuo's wives after a series of efforts. Who wouldn't like a cute, beautiful, good-looking, and obedient little girl? Only Sasuke had an extremely negative feeling towards Yakumo. Not only did he not give a good face to Yakumo, his future sister-in-law who was actively trying to please him, but he also coldly snorted at her. Brother Natsuo, why did you choose her? Sasuke was very dissatisfied. She's giving birth to children for the Kurama clan. Isn't it delaying our time for the resurgence of the Ichiha clan? Um, actually, I think the possibility of our children awakening the Sharingan is very high. Natsuo hesitated to say. Then there is no need to risk it. Our population is scarce, and time is pressing. You should take advantage of every moment to focus on the resurgence of the Ichiha clan. Why bet on her? What if her first male child really does not awaken the bloodline Ichiha? That would be a waste of time, Sasuke argued. Sasuke had a negative perception of Yukumo, mainly because the first male child she gives birth to will be sent to the Kurama clan. Although the Kurama clan will return the child if he awakens the Sharingan, but why take that risk? Isn't it better to directly find someone else to give birth to a child? Natsuo didn't mention the fact that Kurama Yukumo has cage level potential. He was just casually comforting Sasuke saying that he should believe in the Achiha bloodline, and that any child born will definitely awaken the Sharingan. In fact, Natsuo doesn't care if the boy awakens the Sharingan or not. The system only cares if the child is Natsuo's. If he is Natsuo's son even if he is just born and his name is changed and given to another shinobi clan, Natsuo will still receive the corresponding rewards. Based on this characteristic, when the system first appeared and Natsuo hadn't returned to Konoha yet, when he inherited the Achiha heritage, he even almost considered joining another ninja village. Please treat me as a stallion, gentlemen. I will definitely strive to procreate for the land of lightning, land of earth, land of wind, and rebuild the Achiha bloodline, completely integrating the Achiha into your ninja village. After all, if he joined another ninja village, they would definitely want to absorb the Achiha bloodline and provide Natsuo with many women. It would also be safe, and there would be no need to worry about political struggles affecting Natsuo. But later on, he realized that being a stallion might not necessarily be so happy. After all, he didn't know if the women arranged by other ninja villages would be shy, cute, and well-endowed women, or if they would be rough and tall women with a waist circumference of seven feet. In the end, Natsuo decided to take the risk and return to Kanoha to inherit the Acheha heritage. Sasuke snorted lightly, still somewhat dissatisfied. But he at least knew that Kurama Yakumo, although possibly wasting Natsuo's energy, is still a member of the Kurama clan, and a guest of the Acheha. He did not have any worse actions towards Kurama Yakumo. He just picked up his ninja tools bag and walked away. Brother Natsuo, today's sister Amayori said that she wants to teach me swordsmanship, so I'm leaving first. Natsuo watched Sasuke's figure, lightly laughed and shook his head. Sasuke is indeed the reincarnation of Indra, the eldest son of a sage of six parts, and naturally possesses unique charm. Don't be fooled by his cold appearance, he is actually quite likable. Natsuo's wives are quite concerned about Sasuke, after all, he is their only younger brother-in-law. If they are lucky, if Sasuke mentions Natsuo a few more times, the probability of sharing the same room today will increase a lot. After all, the Achiha clan is now scarce, even if there are many wives who are pregnant, they are unable to share the favor. Of course, Ringo Amayori is not like that. Her teaching Sasuke is more of a product of boredom. Now, thanks to Natsuo's efforts, Ringo Amayori has successfully become pregnant. And pregnant women should not engage in excessive physical activity. 
However, as a shinobi of Kurigika, Ringo Emayori has long been accustomed to a world full of danger, to killing, and to the constant sense of urgency that one must strive or die. She has been unable to fully embrace the peaceful life of a pregnant woman. It's not just Ringo Emayori, in fact, when female spies from other countries arrive in the Achiha clan, similar situations occur. Ringo Emayori is a typical example of Kurigika Kyunoichi. She herself cannot engage in intense physical activity, but she simply cannot sit still and always wants to do something. After a few boring moments, she eventually sets her sights on Sasuke. She begins teaching Sasuke ninja training, guiding his practice with a particular emphasis on swordsmanship. My swordsmanship is among the best in the entire ninja world, proudly declares Ringo Amayori. As one of the members of the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist, she has been practicing swordsmanship since she was young, so she has the confidence to say such things. And coincidentally, Sasuke himself also possesses lightning attribute chakra, which complements her attribute very well. Sasuke himself is also very interested in swordsmanship. In the future, he will obtain the sword of Kusanagi from Orochimaru and make it his weapon. The master and disciple immediately agreed and began training. After all, Ringo Amayori has cage level strength, so even though she cannot engage in intense activities due to pregnancy, teaching a small Sasuke is not a problem. It can even be said that her teaching is more effective than Natsuo's teaching. After all, Natsuo would not casually display his strong power. But Ringo Emayori doesn't care about these things. However, after experiencing Ringo Emayori's teaching a few times, Sasuke became puzzled. Her background seems to be that of a commoner. But the strength she is displaying now, not to mention a commoner Kyunoichi, even a Kyunoichi from a large shinobi clan, wouldn't have it, right? Ringo Emayori's background is still arranged by Natsuo. It is difficult to obtain the identity of a shinobi, but it is very easy to obtain the identity of a commoner. The management of Kanoha is relatively negligent. Sasuke knows that some shinobi will pretend to be commoners to gather intelligence in Kanoha village. After mentioning a few words discreetly in front of Natsuo, Sasuke received Natsuo's response of I know. It's okay, you can rest assured to accept her guidance. And he felt a little relieved. However, soon he began to worry about something else. Sister Amayori, she is so strong, she won't look down on brother Natsuo, right? Sasuke frowned, feeling worried. There's no way around it. The shinobi world is a fight for the survival of the fittest, and the weak are naturally subject to ridicule. And brother Natsuo is the head of a clan. So, during training breaks, Sasuke tried hard to promote Natsuo's excellence to Ringo Amayori. Brother Natsuo is a good person. He sacrificed his own glory as a ninja for the good of the Achiha clan. His talent is average, although his strength is a bit weak, but he is willing to work hard. If it weren't for the Achiha clan holding him back, he would definitely be a qualified Jonin. The core idea is just one sentence. Although Natsuo's strength may be weaker than yours now, he can make money and care for others. Please don't look down on him. Ringo Emayori was speechless. She recalled the scene of Natsuo showing off and beating her in the empty and uninhabited forest. You dare call this weak? Yes, yes, I won't belittle him, Ringo Emayori responded perfunctorily. Or at least I won't until I can beat him. She told herself in her mind. He can earn money, support his family, Ringo Emayori continued saying. While in his mind she said to herself, it's better that he focus all of his energy on making money, instead of continuing to get stronger. I'll kill him once I get stronger. He's a good person indeed, a good person. I want to become a good person too in the future once I can defeat you. I will definitely learn from you and beat you in various ways. Although Ringo Emayori had a very superficial attitude when answering, but Sasuke was still young after all, and she managed to calm Sasuke's worries. Sasuke even felt that he had made a contribution and decided to talk to his sister-in-law more during this time, praising Natsuo. Ringo Emayori. Training ended. Watching Sasuke's departing figure, Ringo Emayori couldn't help but shake her head. This guy Natsuo, really. After all, the struggles in Kurigika were bloodier, and she could understand the reason why Natsuo hid his true strength. But can't your younger brother stop talking to me about these things every day? Every time he mentions it, I remember the miserable state of being beaten by you back then. Ringo Emayori was full of hate. Just you wait, Natsuo. Once I surpass your strength, you'll see how I'll beat you. A few days later, Natsuo hadn't started dealing with the problem of Yukumo yet. But a group of guests took the initiative to enter the gate of the Achiha clan, while it was late at night. Long time no see, Lord Natsuo. Yakushi Kabuto revealed his elegant face and pushed his glasses. He put on a business-like fake smile. This time, I brought a gift from Lord Orochimaru as he spoke, he waved his hand. Several graceful Kinochi stood obediently to the side, all of the medical ninjas. And that concludes this episode. 
If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.